On day one, I spawned in as a cute and not so ugly little duckling. I'm so tiny. I've only got two hearts. I guess that checks out. I'm not strong. I'm just a square of fluff. At least I can fly. Nope, I can't fly yet, but I can swim. And check out my duck family. I've got a mama duck and a bunch of duckling siblings. They were all swimming in a pond. Hey guys, wait up for me. Wow, this sure is peaceful. Just paddling along. My siblings and I had a great time splashing around together and following Mother Duck around. We didn't even run into any trouble. As the sun set that night, we made a little shelter and all huddled together to go to sleep. Maybe this will be an easy 100 days of survival. Hey, a duck can dream. On day two, we were all awoken by the sound of loud barking. I looked around and saw we were surrounded by some mean looking dogs. Our little duck shelter was super weak. The dogs got right in and started attacking us. Oh no, I would have to be brave. Feel the wrath of my mighty beak. I tried to fight back, but I instantly realized that a little duck stands no chance against big mean dogs. We would have to make a run for it. My duck family and I fled away, waddling as fast as our little webbed feet could take us. But it was no use. The dogs ended up surrounding us again. I have to do something. Whoa! Next thing I knew, I was tumbling fast down a steep hill. Ouch! Oof! You could definitely say I was on a roll. I fell with a splash into some water at the end of the hill. I was nowhere near my family anymore. They were all still far above me. My family was being kidnapped. I did what I could to find my way back in time to save them, but by the time I arrived, everyone was gone. Oh, no. This is not good. What'll I do without them? I made my way back to where I first saw my family. I wish I was playing with the other ducklings right now. I don't want to be all alone. If I wanted to survive long enough to find out what happened to them, I'd have to find some place to hide. I noticed a little hole along the edge of the pond and ducked into it. No pun intended. I waited out the night there and decided to track down my duck family in the morning. On day three, I woke up without any issues from the other predators. I hopped out of the hole in hopes of seeing that my family had returned. But to my great disappointment, there were no signs of other ducks around. With nothing else to do, I went around and started collecting and mining materials to build a better shelter. I didn't want to be out in the open if the dogs returned. I'll have to be smarter than the average bird brain when I build this shelter. I need to keep the big, bad dogs out. Eventually, I had a good amount of supplies and started crafting my craft table, wood tools, and then began the beginnings of my little house by the shore of the pond. Location, location, location. This house had a great view. It was the perfect spot for a duck like me. On days four to five, I still needed lots more materials for my base. I had to waddle off a little farther away from the pond to get more materials. Suddenly, I saw a peacock in the distance. I came closer and asked the peacock if I could get some wood. I explained my situation to him. The bird gasped. My family was kidnapped by a group of dogs, too. No way! What are the chances of that happening? Do you know where our families were taken? The bird wasn't sure, but explained that they were being kept somewhere so their feathers could be harvested over and over. That's awful, ruining lives just for some measly feathers. We heard a rustling and out jumped an ocelot. The peacock was instantly spooked and ran away. I wish I could get away. But that wasn't an option for me. I would have to be tough. I was only a tiny duck, but I wanted to find my family. I couldn't let this cat ruin my chances to do that. I was able to dodge a lot of the attacks the cat threw at me. Then without too much trouble, I defeated that rascally cat. You were a bad putty tat. Once the cat was gone, I could feel myself changing. I was leveling up. I wasn't a little duckling anymore. I was a little bit bigger duckling. I had extra hearts and let's test out these wings. Hmm, I can fly a little bit. I'm a flying talking ducky now. I could only fly a short distance, but it would give me some much needed advantages. This, this was neat. On day six to eight, I returned back to my base and started crafting some stone tools. As I worked, I started hearing something outside. I carefully went and looked around. I was hoping to see my duck family, but instead I saw one of those awful dogs sniffing around my house. I wasn't going to let him get away with his evil deeds. He would be sorry for stealing my family. Hey, you, dog, who are you? And what have you done with my family? The dog refused to give any information. Instead, it lurched at me. The dog probably thought that this would be an easy fight, but this time I had my stone tools. I was ready to take him down, and that's just what I did. Once the dog was gone, I saw that it dropped a note. I picked it up and read it. The note was in order for the dog to find the duck that got away and to bring me back to the farm located in the Badlands. Aha, I will quack this case soon enough. Now I knew they were somewhere in the Badlands. Having that dog come after me proved to be a very helpful thing after all. On days nine to 10, I did not want to waste any time. I traveled towards the Badlands. Having my new ability to briefly fly came in handy. Whenever I'd come across ravines or other obstacles, I could flop my way right across them. Up, up, and away. By and by, I made it to the Badlands with no harm done. I spotted the farm, but it didn't look so much like a farm. It looked more like a prison. There were so many sad animals fenced in and caged up. So many birds in cages. That's so mean. Birds need to be free to flap and fly. They shouldn't be cooped up. 
I noticed all the depressed animals, but I didn't notice the big wolf guard staring me down until I was close to her. I assumed she would yell at me, but instead, she lowered her voice. You shouldn't be here. I would run far away from here if I were you. Wait, huh? you're not going to try and capture me? Not if I don't have to. I'm not exactly happy with what is happening here. I'd leave myself, but things are complicated. Who is in charge here? I shouldn't be telling you any of this, but if you must know, he is a powerful monster. A big, big, big dog. Fearsome and powerful. No one dares go against him, or you'll be destroyed. Just then, another guard came out of nowhere and attacked me. You need to go to obedience school. Didn't anyone tell you not to bite? I tried to fight back, but the guard was too strong. There's only one way out of this. I would have to run. I didn't like the idea of running away from my family, but I knew if I wanted to help them, I'd have to live to fight another day. I took my chance, flapping my wings. I dashed away from the farm. On days 11 to 12, I ran away. I decided to take a rest in a tree. My wings and legs were getting so tired. I was new to this flying thing. I was getting ready to rest my eyes when I heard hooting. Huh? At first, I wasn't sure where the voice was coming from, but then I noticed an old owl on a branch. Who, who are you, young duck? Oh, I didn't see you there. Pardon me. I'm Zozo. What's your name? Who, I am Wayma the Wise. Who are you running away from? I'm running from these dogs that are rounding up a lot of birds and other animals. They are throwing them in cages. They took my whole family. You should be very careful. You don't want to end up in a cage. Who? I know of who you speak. For this happened when I was a young owl, not much bigger than yourself. Animals were being taken from their homes and forced to do the bidding of their captors. We fought together and eventually defeated our foe. I'm much too old to fight again, but I can see the world is in need of a hero. Perhaps that hero is you, Zozo. Who? Me? I don't know about that. I wasn't so sure that I could save the day. I couldn't even defeat one of the guards, but I knew I would do whatever I could to help my family escape. I bid the old owl goodbye and thanked him for his wisdom. I headed back to my base. I needed to regroup and figure out a plan. On days 13 to 15, I woke and realized what time it was. Upgrade time! I wasn't strong enough yet to go up against these dogs in the Badlands, but I could make my base more secure. After all, they could be sending more dogs out to grab me at any minute. So I started improving my little lakeside home. Man, I can't believe Big Dog is capturing all these animals. It's so messed up. If I didn't figure out something quick, more animals would be in trouble. I finished my upgrades and really wished my duck family could see the home I was building for them. I think they would get a quack out of it. Thinking of them made me get an idea. I could totally have them with me, just in a different way. A statue way. You know what time it is, right? Statue making time! I began building and thought about how the ducks taught me a lot. Life should be spent with the ones you love and being free as a bird. I liked the way it was coming along. The statue family would keep me company until I rescued my real family. I was really getting into building the statue when I heard a bird chirping excitedly. It was the peacock that had run away from the wild ocelot. Well, bless my soul, it's you. Good to see you're still alive after that run-in with the cat. Yeah, me too. My name is Zozo, by the way. I'm Taffy. I noticed your nice lake house. Did you build that all on your own? Yep, now I'm working on a statue of my duck family that got taken away. It's hard living on your own, isn't it? I miss my family too. Say, you could live here with me if you want. We can keep each other safe. I am working on a plan to rescue our families. Taffy thought that sounded great. As long as I won't be too much of a burden. I went inside and I made sure that she had everything a bird could need. On days 16 to 19, I decided it was past time I got around to making some iron weapons. I wandered around the area, and after a bit of flying around, I spotted something interesting. It was a mine shaft. Wow. Bingo! I entered the mine and followed the maze tracks to some iron. Of course, it wasn't a walk in the park down in the mines. It was a walk in the dark. I met some zombies and skeletons down there that were interested in ending my life. Back off, I've got a sword and I know how to use it. I started swinging my sword at them and had a couple close calls, but I knocked them out pretty quickly. It was good to see I was learning how to hold my own. Still, I didn't care to run into any more creatures, so after I had enough iron, I booked it out of the mine as fast as I could. Back at the house, I readied my supplies and got to work, crafting my stronger weapons and armor with my crafting table. These will give me the edge I need to go up against those tough guards. On days 20 to 22, it was time to release the Quacken. I told Taffy to keep a bird's eye on the base while I returned back to the Badlands. This time, I would be ready. Those guards won't see me coming. Because this time, I wasn't going through the door. I was flying overhead. I know what you're thinking. I wasn't the most accomplished flyer, but I could fly better than those dogs could. It was worth a try. As I approached the walls of the farm, I took a running start and launched into the air. I'm like a flying ninja. Yay! There's a duck flying over our walls, into the farm. Now that's what you call a bird brain. Well, I guess I wasn't as stealthy as I hoped I was. I landed near the guards. 
Wait a second, it's that troublesome duck that keeps getting away from us. Get him! He jumped into the air, dodging attacks. Toucan, play at this game, on guard. I got out my weapons and started handing out damage. I couldn't lie, it was a bit daunting. They would get a hit or a bite, but with my armor protecting me, they were toast after a few hits. What a rough day for you dogs, getting your tails handed to you by a little duck like me. Finally, I had finished the guards off. I didn't waste any time searching for my family. I started running all around the ground searching for my family. I wanted to save all the other animals I saw, and I promised myself I would help them. But first, I had to locate my family. But they weren't in any of the cages or fences. Where are they? What is all this squawking and hollering? A chill ran down my spine. A giant creature stomped loudly out of the foreboding base. It was enormous. A big dog. I was terrified. Guards, why are you letting some pipsqueak cause such a ruckus, eh? Looks like somebody ought to teach this quacker a lesson. Big dog let out a pss, pss, pss. Out came a tiger. He charged at me. I tried to fly away, but it was no use. This big cat could jump. Hi! I used my weapons, and his attacks broke my armor quickly. I was exposed, and I was losing hearts fast. Hiya! A big wolf came bounding into the fight. It was the nice guard. She told the tiger to back off. Let's get out of here. We ran for it. Who knew how many more guards would come running after us? Or worse, big dog. Shockingly, the tiger didn't chase after us. After a while, we felt safe enough to stop running. You saved my life. I couldn't stand by any longer, and you're really brave. You might have what it takes to take down the farm. I failed to save my family for a second time. I think it's pretty obvious I can't do that. The wolf assured me that she believed in me. It was nice, but I still felt awful that I hadn't saved them yet. Where are you going to go now? Honestly, I didn't think that far ahead. I just couldn't let you become catnip. I have a base I'm building with another bird friend. Why don't you come live there until you figure things out? I'd be very grateful to stay with you both. I led the way back to the lake house. By the way, I'm Zozo. What do I call you? Awoo is the name. Mm, seems fitting. On days 23 to 26, we got back to the base. Taffy greeted us, and I introduced Awoo to Taffy. I'll need to do some upgrades and add a room for you, Awoo. It shouldn't take too long. I made sure to make the room nice and spacious for Awoo. It was the best room in the house. I noticed I hadn't added to my statue in a while, so I got to work on that too. You know, I think I'll add my friends to this piece. I'd like to honor all my good friends and family. Just then, Awoo came trotting up. Wow, this is looking great. Everyone watching should subscribe so that they can see all the other cool stuff you'll make. What do you mean, everyone who's watching? It's just us here. Uh, they know who they are. On days 27 to 31, I went out exploring to find new resources. I was pecking around when I heard someone who sounded very upset. I followed the voice and came upon a raccoon. Hello, is everyone okay? No, everything is not okay. I've been kicked out of my house by a big old monster. He thinks he can just push me out of my home because he's mean and can destroy me super fast. Huh, nobody ain't got no respect these days. I tried to calm the raccoon down and asked him to show me to his house. He walked away and showed me to his home. I approached the door and sure enough, there was a monster cooped up inside. The monster growled and told me to get lost before I became its next meal. Listen, this isn't your home. You really shouldn't take things that aren't- Are you still talking? Be gone! Be gone or be eaten! Silly food talking back to a predator such as I? If I weren't so cozy in here and already eaten three meals today, why I'd gobble you up in one bite. Scram, pests! It was clear this rude guy wasn't going to listen to anything I had to say. I'd have to teach this guy some manners, and I had an idea. On days 32 to 35, I started digging near the raccoon's house. What we had here was a reverse three little pig situation. In this scenario, the big bad wolf is inside the house and I need to blow the house down. And to do that, I started to dig a tunnel deep down under the house until I found some lava pools. This was one pool I did not want to get my feathers wet in. Now that I knew where the lava was, I headed back out of the tunnel. The next part of my plan was to find some creepers. As I came out of the hole, I quickly found some. I'm just here for your gunpowder. Don't mind me. Now that I had gunpowder, I just needed one more thing. Sand. I headed to the riverbed and gathered a bunch up. With the gunpowder and sand, I crafted some TNT. I think you might know where I'm going with this. I returned to the tunnel that I dug under the raccoon's house and ran down to the lava pools. I carefully set the TNT next to the lava and began setting a fuse up and out of the tunnel. Match, set, light. Everything was going according to plan. On days 36 to 39, I waddled up to the front door and called out to the monster. The door opened to reveal the grouchy foe. Hello again. I thought I'd let you know that you have a limited time offer to leave this house before I huff and puff and blow this house down. And how do you suppose to do such a thing? Easy. I have a brick of TNT nearby and a fuse that's ready for me to light. TNT? It's dynamite and I'll win this fight. I would slither on out of here if I were you. This house isn't worth your life. 
You talk too much, duck. I yield to no one. Be gone. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. I activated the fuse and down the signal went into the tunnel. I took cover. There was a giant explosion and the floor of the house gave way, sending the monster to his fiery grave. Yes, my plan worked. The raccoon was nearby and watched the whole thing. Was your plan to destroy my entire house? The raccoon was not exactly happy, despite the fact that the monster was gone. I felt bad. Maybe I had been a little intense with my plan. Now how am I going to afford to rebuild my house? Put it on my bill. That was a joke. I don't actually have any money, but what I do have is a really big lake house that would totally fit you. I have other friends staying there too. Why don't you come stay there with us? The raccoon grumbled but agreed. He was still a little sore about his house being blown to smithereens. I showed him the way to the lake house and we made our way there. On days 40 to 43, we arrived back to the lake house. The raccoon sure was a grouchy fellow, but something about him was endearing too, like an angry little elf. They are just adorable when they get mad. You can't help but smile when they yell at you. I showed the raccoon around and created him a raccoon-tastic space for his home. I went over to my statue creations. We had my duck family and taffy. I loved how it was looking. It was only right to build a statue of the raccoon too. I started building the raccoon statue. Looking at all these family and friends in the statues made me think about another creature that had been so nice to me, Waymar the wise owl. I didn't want anything to happen to him. Maybe I'll go visit him and see if he would like to stay at the house. We are safer in numbers. I don't want him getting captured. On days 44 to 49, I returned to the tree where the owl lived. I found him sitting under the tree, but he didn't look so good. Huh? Mr. Waymar, are you okay? Who? Who? Ah! Zozo, my dear boy. <coughs> I was worried you might have been one of the henchmen. I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little under the weather. It's hard to get food and such these days. I can't fly, you see. I'm kind of stuck in this tree. That was not good. I couldn't stand by and let Waymar suffer. I told Waymar that I wanted him to come live at the house with us and we would help take care of him. He was so grateful but didn't know how he would get there. I'll figure out something. I'll find a way to carry you there. I immediately thought of the mine carts in the mines. Oh, those would work great. I just needed a way to push it along. I headed back to the mine and started collecting the tracks for the cart. I would make a track from the owl's tree to the base. That should be enough. I took everything back to the owl and laid some tracks down and rebuilt the cart. Climb aboard! Once he was in, I pushed Waymar along in the cart, picking up the tracks as I went along and setting them ahead until I made it all the way back to the lake house. I was excited to build him a room in the house. My little misfit family was growing so much. Waymar was super grateful for the help. He couldn't believe he had us to care for him now. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. I'm an owl. On days 50 to 53, I decided to go deeper in the mine to find some diamonds. I hadn't seen diamonds yet, but I was certain I'd run into some if I went a little farther in. As I went deeper, I ran into a big stinky toad. I smell something most foul, and it's not me. Aha! Care for a slice of my sword? I swung my sword while the toad tried hitting me with his tongue. He was no match for me though, and I quickly took him out. I went a little farther and ran into some tarantulas too. Ooh, these guys creep me out. I made quick work of them, swinging my sword as hard as I could. They too were soon gone. That's when at long last, I had found the diamonds. I mined them up as quickly as I could and then headed back home to make them into things. I made a strong pair of armor and some super strong weapons. As they say, diamond weapons hurt forever. I definitely felt I had a better chance of kicking bad guy booty with these upgrades. I just needed to figure out where my family was being held. As I was crafting, one of my friends told me Waymar needed to see me, so I went to his room. Hey, Waymar the Wise, you wanted to see me? Oh, oh, Zozo, I have loved being here. I feel so much happier. Oh, <coughs> I hate to seem ungrateful for asking you anything, so you know what? Never mind, it was silly anyways. No, please, I want to help. I'm happy to do anything, anything at all. Well, okay, if you insist, I have the most overwhelming craving for a tropical fish. I loved eating it when I was younger. My siblings and I would devour them when we were in the nest together. <coughs> oh, how I miss those days. Sure, that's no trouble at all. I'll go right away. Waymar was so excited to hear I would help him. I started on my quest immediately. On days 54 to 57, I finally reached the water. There was a perfect spot for catching tropical fish. Now if I was a gorilla or hoglin, I might have trouble getting this fish, but I was a duck, so I was in luck. I paddled out into the water and dove after the fish. Okay, this is a little trickier than I thought. I spotted a school of fish and started swinging my sword. Eventually I got one. I kept swinging until I had gotten a few more. Well, now to simply swim back to the shore with no problem. Ah! Somebody bit my tail feathers! It was a shark! I was under attack! Actually, I was more over attack as the shark was below me. Oh, you like picking on smaller fish, do ya? Wait a second, don't you eat smaller fish too? Well, yeah, but that one was supposed to be mine. Now scram! I fought the shark. It was tough, but eventually I won thanks to my upgrades. 
Oh, check me out. I'm growing. I'm a much bigger duck now. Wow. I had leveled up. Finally. Hey, maybe I can fly now. I thought a happy thought, took off running, and started flapping my wings. I zoomed into the air. This was amazing. I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. On days 58 to 62, I arrived back in the base with the fish. As I climbed into the base, I saw that Waymar was even worse off. Oh no, Waymar, you don't look so good. Here, I brought you your favorite fish. This should help. <coughs> Thank you, Sozo. I don't have the energy to eat it just yet. Let me just put it here. I remember when Mother would return home with the fish back in 1932, just as you just did. <coughs> She liked them lightly pan-fried <coughs> and put a dollop of cranberry sauce on, on, on the side. Waymar? Waymar? Waymar suddenly passed away with a smile on his face. I wondered if I had gotten him the fish sooner if I would have saved him. But I was also glad he took his final breath, knowing he was cared for and not alone. He was going to be very missed. On days 63 to 66, I was moping around the base. I felt so sad, and that was okay. I just needed to let out my feelings and be upset. I went over to the statues and had a good sob while I added another one to the bunch. I wanted to honor Weimar's memory by adding him to the group. The statue made me feel better, and I could smile again. There was my wise friend Weimar staring back at me. This place was becoming a whole museum full of statues. It was beautiful. On day 67 to 70, Awu came up to tell me that they had found something. It's a note from Waymar. You're going to want to read this. I took the note and read it. Zozo, check out the old fort east of here. Your family might be there. And remember, things aren't always what they seem. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Believe in yourself and your plans. What was that supposed to mean? It was a nice sentiment, but I feel like it was some kind of coded message. I'd try to remember that. Well, Awu, looks like I need to follow these clues. Can you help keep watch over the lake house while I'm gone? Awu was up for the task. In the morning, I would take my leave. On day 71 to 74, I went in search of the hidden prison in the tundra. As I traveled across the snowy forest, I spied a fort hiding in the mountains. Is that it? I saw that the fort was active and that there were guards that looked just like the ones from the farm. They were carrying large shipments of feathers out of the fort. This place must be a prison where the other ducks and birds are being held captive. They are harvesting their feathers. My blood boiled. I didn't waste another moment. I drew my diamond weapons, and with my diamond armor, I charged in. I started swinging my sword with all my mighty duck strength. Those guards didn't stand a chance. I couldn't believe how easily I blew through them all. Feel the wrath of my revenge. I made my way into the prison, cutting down anyone who stood in my way. I was feeling like I could take on anything at this point. On day 75 to 78, I reached a room that looked important. I barged in, unafraid, and saw the tiger that had almost destroyed me back at the farm. I felt a tinge of fear creep back into me. Did I have what it took to go up against him? Regardless, what choice did I have now? My family could be in this very room. I shook off my fear and went head to head with the cat, or clawed a sword, rather. This tiger was still tough. I got lots of good hits in, but he was so strong. It wasn't doing that much damage. He was good at blocking, too. He even scratched me a few times. And I saw tons of birds in cages. Maybe my family wasn't here. As we fought, I noticed a big lever. It looked important. I took a chance and hit it hard. All of a sudden, the cage door swung open. The birds were free. The tiger was in shock at his sudden misfortune. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Some of the birds started to attack him. While he was distracted by all of the birds flying out of their cages, I was able to attack his weak spot. He was done for. The tiger was no more. I looked around the room and saw my baby duck siblings. They were so excited to see me and couldn't believe how much I had grown. I was so relieved to see them. And where's Mama Duck? The ducks look sad. Mama got taken by the big bad dog to his mansion. The other birds say that it's on some sort of volcano. That seems like a bad place to build a mansion. This dog isn't as smart as I thought. Don't worry, little ducklings. I will rescue Mama. On day 79 to 84, I spent some time searching the room where I had originally found the tiger. You never know what kind of information you can find, and this tiger was clearly a leader of this operation. He had all sorts of confidential information laying around, and if nothing else, I could take his valuables. He didn't have any use for them now that he was toast. I looked all around and found a treasure chest. Bingo. I opened it up and found a map. I looked closer. Well, what'll you know? A map right to the Volcano Mansion. Wow. And what else do we have here? I saw that there was a whistle in there, too. I blew it, but nothing happened. Huh? Why he kept a broken whistle, I'll never know. But uh, I'll just keep it, just in case. With the room fully inspected, I went back to the ducklings. All right, you guys, let's get the quack out of here. I built you a home that's super secure. Let's go. 
I saw some of the birds that had helped in the fight against the tiger. They looked unsure of where to go and what to do. I invited them back to the lake house with us. They were very grateful and agreed to come with us. We waddled as fast as we could back to the base. On days 85 to 89, I returned safely home with all my ducklings in a row. I immediately started expanding the house and made more rooms for all of the birds. They loved their new living quarters. Sure beats a small cage. Awu and Taffy had something exciting to show me while I was away. We built something very enchanting. They had found items to make an enchanting table and had what we needed to enchant my armor. Wow, thank you! This is incredible! If I wanted to rescue Mama Duck, I needed to be as ready as possible for going up against Big Dog. This would give me a fighting chance. On days 90 to 94, I walked over to my field of statues. They were almost all done. I just needed to finish building the rest of Waymar's statue. I was so excited to reveal all of my statues to my friends. As I looked at Waymar's statue, I thought about the strange note he had given me. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Huh, you know, that gives me an idea about something. I put the finishing touches on the statues and was finally finished. A field of all my favorite friends. What a sight! On days 95 to 97, I knew it was time to go rescue my mom. I followed the map to the mansion on the volcano. This place was spooky. I could see the appeal of building a mansion on the volcano now. That is, if you're an evil villain, it's perfect for that vibe. I had to admit, I felt a bit scared. And that was okay. That didn't mean I was going to run away. No, I was saving my mother. Come dogs or lava. I brandished my weapons and started fighting my way through the guard dogs along the path to the door. On day 98, I was exploring the mansion when I went into a room with a strange looking bunny man inside of it. What the? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Oh wait, I'm you! You're me! Yeah, you're me from my bunny video! Oh yeah, that was an awesome adventure! When everyone is done watching this video, they should go check that one out! Amazing! Well, I've got a family to save! See ya! On day 99, I made it into Big Dog's lair inside of the spooky mansion. After defeating tons of guards, I felt something funny happening. I was leveling up! This is just what I needed! I needed to be a mighty duck to defeat a massive dog! I'm as strong as I can get now! I was super buff! I was going to give Big Dog some trouble with my new strength. He's going to have to answer to this firequacker. It was time for the ultimate smackdown. I looked around the room and saw Mother Duck in a cage. Mom! Zozo, what are you doing here? I'd like to ask you the same question, troublesome quacker. Huh, looks like you haven't learned your lesson. And you've been hitting the gym, I see. Like that's gonna help you. I'm here to take my mother home. Can't you see me and your mom are madly in love with each other? Trying to split us up, are you? I'm not in love with you, you freak! You will be if I keep you locked up long enough. It's called Stockholm Syndrome, love. Look it up. Works in the fairy tales all the time. Dude, you've got some serious issues. This is no way to treat someone you like or love. That's no way to treat anyone. What a weirdo. This dog needed to be put out of his misery. I drew my weapon and attacked Big Dog. I gave him everything I had. Every bit of strength I could muster went into every hit. But he was still too strong. I was barely making a dent. Compared to him, I was like a yappy chihuahua. My blows were just not dealing enough damage. Maybe he was right. Maybe I couldn't defeat him. Had I come all this way just to fail? Then I remembered the broken whistle in the chest. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. I pulled out the whistle and blew it. Nothing. But that's how it was supposed to work. It was a dog whistle. Wow. Only dogs can hear it. Big Dog stopped attacking and sat politely. Good boy. Now play dead. Big Dog's armor came flying off of him. Don't look. Big Dog was completely hairless. Big Dog explained that he wanted all the feathers to cover his naked self. There is nothing wrong with being hairless, and I'm sure many of us would have donated feathers to you, but you chose to ruin people's lives over this. I have had enough with your silly excuses. You aren't going to cage up anyone ever again. With that, a gladiator kicked him out of his window and down into the river of lava. On day 100, I let my mom out of the cage and we went back to the lake house. The ducklings were so excited to see their mother. We all had a wonderful reunion. I introduced everyone to my new family. Everyone couldn't stop raving about all the crazy adventures we'd had and how great the lake house was. We were going to live happily ever after. No more living in cages, just freedom and family. On day one, I spawned in as a baby dragon. Whoa, I'm no ordinary dragon. I'm a warden dragon. I opened my mouth and shot out some dragon breath, then shot off a sonic boom. They were both pretty weak, but still cool. That's when I noticed a nearby ender dragon and warden. Huh? Hey, I have the same powers as you guys. You must be my parents. My mom and dad were excited to see me, and everything was happy. But suddenly, a big buff evil Steve came out of nowhere. 
What's this? A warden and a dragon combined? I already hate dragons, but a dragon combined with a warden is even worse! Run, Zozo! We'll hold him off! I wanted to help, but she was right! I was too weak! As I watched the battle, I saw that Buff Steve was able to destroy my dad! No! How can he be so powerful? Buff Steve then captured my mom! I had to hurry away! You get back over here, or your mom will never be free! Don't worry about me! Run to a portal and destroy it behind you! I listened to my mother like any good boy should, and ran away before Buff Steve could capture me. I ran into another portal to escape. On day two, I came teleporting through another portal, landing in the overworld. Wow. I turned and shot off my sonic boom, destroying the portal behind me. I don't know how much time that buys me, but I have to get stronger to save my mom. If I was going to save my mom, I had to get the gear to do it. Using my claws, I began gathering up some nearby materials in order to build a base. I don't need anything fancy yet, I just need something that can keep me safe. Speaking of being safe, I was suddenly attacked by a bear. Get back! I have claws too! But trying to win this fight was foolish, I had no choice but to run. Oh boy, it looks like the overworld is just as dangerous as the nether. I kept running until I found myself on a nice, steep mountain. If I hollow this place out, this could make for a perfect base. Excited with the idea, I got right to it, building my base. I have so many ideas of how I can improve it, but we'll start simple for now. Soon, the start of the base was ready. I feel like it's going pretty good so far. Tomorrow will bring me one step closer to saving my mom. On day three, I kept mining down into the mountain when I popped out on the other side. But as luck would have it, there was something unexpected. Huh? Is that an ender dragon nest? Wow. It looked like there was an egg inside of it too. Just then, a phantom appeared. He got closer to the egg. He was going to eat it. Oh no you don't, the dragons are my friends! The phantom clearly didn't expect anyone to be here, and I was able to hit him hard. In no time, I managed to take him out. Finally, it feels good not to run away for once. And what's this? The phantom had dropped some phantom skin, which I picked up. With it gone, I was able to get really close to the egg. That's when I saw there was a note nearby. My dear child, if you are reading this, then something has happened to me. I was setting out in search of food for us. It is very likely that a powerful being called Steve may come after us. He collects powerful creatures like us dragons. Take care and stay safe. Oh no, it's not just me. Dragons everywhere are in trouble. It's not enough to just save my mom from Buff Steve. I'm going to have to defeat him. I quickly picked up the egg to take it back to my base. I could keep it safe there. On days four to five, I arrived back at my base. I got right to work building an incubator for the egg. If it was going to hatch safely, it needed a good environment to thrive in. Just as I finished up, I heard a noise outside. I ran out and saw even more phantoms. Oh man, you guys really want this egg. We'll just try and take it. The phantoms did their best to take me out, but they were no match for me. They would have to try harder than that if they wanted to win. With the two phantoms defeated, I picked up the phantom skin they had dropped. Oh, I know just what to make with this. I went over to my crafting table and used the phantom skin to make myself some phantom skin armor. It was about as strong as leather armor, but it would be better than nothing. On day six to eight, I was starting to get hungry and decided to go look for food. I was a little nervous about leaving the egg behind, but if I couldn't get food, then no one would be able to protect it. I soon came across a village. Hi there, please, do you have any food to spare? The villagers took one look at me and ran away. I guess they weren't used to meeting friendly dragons, or friendly wardens for that matter. Well, no one is around, so bon appetit. I got right to work attacking the animals around. Sure, it felt bad to hurt other animals, but hey, a dragon's gotta eat. And there's no way I was going to eat a salad. At last, I found you. I looked and saw Buff Steve standing there. This time he had on dragon armor. He was even stronger than before. You, what do you want? Isn't it obvious? You. He clearly wasn't in the mood to chat, and I had no choice but to fight. I started swinging, but it was clear he was too strong. Looks like you're all mine. I saw a window to escape, and I took it. I had to get out of there, and fast. Ugh, you might have slipped away this time, but mark my words, I'll find you. He was probably right, but today was not that day. On days 9 to 10, I had made it back to my base. That's when I heard a noise coming from the incubator. Huh? 
Oh no, the egg is in trouble! I ran into the room to find the egg was still there, but it was hatching. Suddenly, a small baby ender dragon climbed out. Wow. Are you... are you my mom? Who, huh? me? No, I'm Zozo. Oh, so where's my mom? Uh, I'm not sure, but she left this note in your nest. It was there when I found you, and then I brought you here to keep you safe. The little dragon read the note. I guess being able to read was a gift us dragons get at birth. I see. Hmm. I wish I could have just stayed in my egg. It's sad out here. Hey, it's okay. There's a lot of cool things to do in the world, too. Really? Like what? I thought about it for a moment, then told her to follow me. I instructed her to mine out a big room in the mountain because we were going to build a cool statue. I wanted to be sure we built it out of sight, though, so Buff Steve wouldn't be able to find our base. The little dragon seemed to really enjoy the creative process and was much happier as we finished the first part. This is a good start, but do you have any guesses as to what it's going to be? I then got to work building her a room to stay in. I knew how hard it was to get your mom taken away from you, so I wanted to be sure she was happy and comfortable. Soon, her room was completed too. On days 11 to 12, the little dragon came out of her room to chat. Hey Zozo, what's my name? Oh, I guess you were born yesterday and could probably use one of those. How about Siveth? Siveth? Yeah, that sounds cool. Oh, and Zozo? Yeah, Siveth? I'm hungry. Oh, right. Hang tight. I'll get both of us something to eat. I went out into the land to try and find some crows to eat. After a bit of searching, I spotted a few. As I got closer, though, I spotted a human nearby. Oh, no, it's Steve. I went to run away when they called out to me. Wait, little dragon. That's when I realized it wasn't buff Steve. I waited until they got a little closer. Hey, don't worry. I'm not here to hurt you like Steve. My name is Alex. What do you want? I want to help you. Steve and I used to be friends, but not anymore. What happened? Steve and I used to adventure together, along with our friend Brianna. One day we were exploring the nether and came across the nether dragon. The dragon didn't mind us being there until Brianna decided to mess with the dragon's eggs. There's something magical about them, and Brianna got too close. The nether dragon destroyed her as the three of us tried to escape. I was sad, but Steve was angry. He vowed to take revenge on all dragons. He finds them and locks them away in his base as revenge. Through this, he has become stronger, but more evil. Turning into what he is today, I feel like it's my responsibility to stop him. Thank you for sharing that with me. He captured my mom and my friend's mom. If we team up, we can stop him. Yes, I was thinking that as well. Although, I think it's important for me to keep searching for more dragons so I can warn them about Steve. But here, take this horn. If you ever need to talk to me, you can use this. I took the horn and thanked her for her help. Maybe we could defeat him after all. On days 13 to 15, I continued looking for food as I thought about everything Alex had told me. Oh no, it's that bear again. I have to fight him off. Otherwise, I might not be able to find more food for days. I was stronger now, so I charged in to fight. The bear was still really strong and really packed to punch. But everyone was counting on me. I couldn't lose. I kept swinging and finally took him out. What's this? I feel so much more powerful. Suddenly, I leveled up, growing in size and gaining more hearts. Wow. Whoa, I feel amazing. If I keep growing like this, maybe I can actually stop Buff Steve. I quickly gathered up the chickens and started leading them back to the base. On day 16 through 19, I arrived back at the base with the chickens. I got right to work building a coop for them to live in. Once the coop was complete, I went over to Siveth to tell her about the chickens and also Alex. This Alex sounds really nice, but I do have one question about everything you told me. What's that? Why are we eating eggs? Dragons come out of eggs too, so that seems kind of weird. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's different. Try not to think about it too much. I left Siveth to think about life and got to work building a mine. I might be able to grow in strength, but I can also build strength by making better armor and weapons. Speaking of which, I found some iron. Oh, perfect. I can finally get rid of my leather armor. This is great. Back in the base, I smelted down all of the iron, then used the iron to make myself a fresh set of armor and weapons. I'm feeling better already. On days 20 to 22, I woke up with a bad feeling in my stomach. I went to Siveth's room and saw she was missing. Siveth? Siveth, where are you? Just then, I heard another sound. It was the horn Alex had given me. She was calling me. I ran out of the base toward the sound. Maybe Alex knew what had happened to her. Soon, I saw Alex. What's going on? 
Zozo, I called for you as soon as I could. I caught sight of Steve. He was chasing a baby dragon. That's not your friend, right? I don't know. It might be. She wasn't in her room this morning. Oh no. I'm not strong enough to face Steve yet, but I'll tell you where you need to go. Alex explained where she saw them, and I hurried off. I soon got to the place Alex described and saw Steve was about to capture Siveth. I had to do something. Hold it right there, Steve. I jumped between the two of them. Ugh, out of my way. I hate dragons, and this one is no different. Wait, you're that warden dragon I saw earlier. You're the worst kind of dragon of all. Quick, Siveth, run! Steve wasn't paying attention, and Siveth was able to get away. Steve was then so distracted by her escaping that I was able to escape too. Hang on, you're not getting away this time. Steve chased after us, and I tried to knock him back while Siveth got away. He was still too strong, but I was able to get enough hits in to stop him from capturing us. Siveth managed to get away. Soon after, I was able to lose Steve in the trees. Siveth and I met back up, then hurried back to the base. On days 23 to 26, Siveth and I arrived back at the base. I was really worried about what had happened. I'm so sorry, Zozo. Are you mad at me? That depends. What happened? Did Steve find our base? No, I left to go and find more supplies to upgrade our stuff when Steve came out of nowhere and tried to grab me. So you don't need to be mad because he didn't find our base. I would have been worried if he found our base, but I'm mad that you left. You could have been captured and I would have never seen you again. I could tell Siveth felt really bad. Look, it's okay. I'm sorry for being mad. I know you were just trying to help, but right now it's too risky. Promise me you'll stay at the base from now on. Okay, I promise. But Zozo? Yeah? Before Steve popped out, I did see something interesting. I think you should go check it out. Siveth explained where I needed to go, and she was right. It did sound like a good place to go. Nice one, Siveth. I'll go take a look. After a bit, I arrived at the place she described. It was a large temple. I stepped inside and was immediately attacked by a bunch of husks. Oh, go drink some water, you dustheads. The husks did their best to bring me down, but I took them out first. After the last one had disappeared, I saw something interesting. Oh, and what might this be? I took a look and saw that there was a bone sword. Wow, this is cool. That's when I realized that the sword also gave me a special ability. Now I could spit spikes. Wow. Now that is awesome and mildly confusing. I tested it out, sending spikes shooting at the wall. As I hit the wall, murals started to appear. Just then, a mummy came out and attacked me. Oh, someone is jealous of my spit takes. I kept launching spit spikes at him, slowly wearing him down. He was not a fan, but it didn't matter because I had to survive this. Soon enough, he was gone. So what's up with these murals? I took a closer look and realized they told the story of an epic adventure. Wow. One you can watch if you search for my channel, Zozo, Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. This is when I survived 100 days as Moses. You'll really like that one if you're liking this one so far. On days 27 to 31, I had left the temple and arrived back at the base. As I entered my base, I could barely recognize Siveth. She was now the same size as me. Wow, Siveth, you're even stronger now. And I know just the way to celebrate. Siveth and I headed out to do some more work on the statue. Siveth felt like a little sister to me, and I was happy to have someone on my side. Together we could do anything. We were finishing up the next part of the statue when Siveth had a thought of her own to share. This is looking good, but something isn't quite right. Feels like it could use a different material? Hmm, I think you're right, and I know just what to get. I took off to grab the material I had in mind. I am a little bigger now. I wonder if I can fly. I gave it a shot and found that while I couldn't fly, I could glide. Well, that's better than nothing. I soon arrived at the bottom of the hole, but was soon attacked by straddlers. Out of my way, I've got a statue to save. The straddlers did their best to knock me down, but they were no match for me. With them out of the way, I quickly found what I was looking for. This amethyst is just what we need. I can't wait to see if it looks good on the statue. I mined up as much amethyst as I thought we'd need, then got ready to head back to the base. The statue is going to look amazing now. On days 32 to 35, I was on my way back to the base when I was attacked out of nowhere by piglins. What are you nosy oinkers doing out here? I fought them off using everything I had until the last of them were defeated. That's when I heard something nearby. Hey, were you hiding from the piglins? It's okay now. Ah, the dragon is talking to me. The villager was so scared and tried to get away from me. But just then, another piglin popped out and started chasing after him. Hey, watch out! 
I rushed over and took on the piglin. In no time, I was able to defeat him. You saved me? Wow, thanks. No problem. Where did all of these piglins come from anyway? I'm not sure, but my village is full of them. We could really use someone like you to come and clear them out for us. Would you be willing to help? Say no more. I'm on the case. On days 36 to 39, I followed the villager back to his village. As we got closer, I could see he was right. The village was full of piglins. Let's try to get a better view of what's going on. We snuck around the outside of the town to get a better viewpoint of what was happening. You see that structure in the middle of the town? That's where everyone is probably hiding out. Got it. Hang back. I'm going to rush in there and get everyone out. Whoa, hang on. I know you took those guys out back there, but those were just low-level scouts. You can't hope to take on all of those guys down there at once. Okay, so what do you suggest? It will be nighttime soon enough. I think we might be able to sneak in and get everyone out safely. I'm good with that plan. We'll give it a shot. On days 40 to 43, the villager and I waited for nightfall. Soon, we saw that the piglins had begun falling asleep. It was time to make our move. Let's do this. We snuck into the village, doing our best to keep quiet. Even the smallest of noises could wake up the piglins. Which, just then, there was a clang. My new villager friend accidentally bumped into something. Sorry. It was too late, though. The piglins were awake and not happy to see us. It looks like it's plan A after all. My new friend was right. These piglins were much stronger than the scouts I had fought outside the village. What he wasn't right about, though, was my ability to take them on. I was tough, and the piglins fell one by one as I took them out. Soon enough, they were all defeated. Zozo, you did it. We then went over to the scared villagers, who weren't exactly happy to see me. Don't worry, everyone. He's a friend. I know dragons can be scary, but Zozo here was the one who rescued all of us. We owe him our lives. The villagers were happy to find out I wasn't there to eat them, and it felt good for people to see me as the hero. Thanks again, Zozo. And in the future, if there's anything we can do for you, just let us know. Will do. Now I've got a statue to go work on. On days 44 to 49, I returned to my base and got to work adding the amethyst to the statue. Sivith was right. This was just what it needed. All right, now we're making some good progress, but still have a ways to go. What do you think so far? All of the building and rescuing from the previous days had made me realize how badly I needed to be protecting myself from attack, so I made sure to do some work on the base. We were going to need strong defenses and traps if Steve ever found us. It had been a while since I had run into him, but I was sure something was going to happen with him soon. On days 50 to 53, I received a message from Alex. Steve and his goons were on the way to my base. How did they find us? All I know is that he was told something by a villager. A villager? After everything I did for that guy, he still didn't trust me. Oh, no, not the guy that was working with you. Just someone from his village. Still, it's a shame they would sell us out like that. Well, thanks for the warning. I'll go tell Sivith. I ran over to Sivith. Get ready, Sivith. They're coming for us, and we're going to be in for the fight of our lives. Meanwhile, outside the castle, Steve soon arrived with a gang of other players. Oh, Zozo, the jig is up. We're here for you and that little friend of yours. I don't care what you want. We didn't do anything to you. Let us live our lives in peace. Peace is not an option. Attack! Steve motioned for two of his soldiers to charge. As they got closer to the door, our traps started firing arrows, which quickly took them out. Urgh, you're smarter than you look, but there's plenty more where that came from. Next up came an archer, who did their best to try and disable our traps, shooting flaming arrows into them. Unfortunately, that seemed to do the trick, and the trap stopped working. Two griefers came up to the door, laid some TNT, and lit it. But suddenly, the traps came back to life, taking out the archer and trapping the griefers in. There was an explosion, which took them out, but also took out the traps and door. The base was open now, though, and the players started to run in, but not before falling into my pitfall trap. Another noob tried running in too, but fell right into the hole. Just then, someone vented in through the side and took a look in the hole. Unfortunately for them, their Spec Ops teammate popped in and knocked them down the hole. These guys really need to learn to work together. He filled in the hole, and the rest of the team charged in. Bring it on! The players charged at me while I did my best to fight them off. Leave us alone! We didn't do anything to you! 
Most of the players were pretty weak, but I could hear someone setting off explosions in the background. I had to hurry. I had defeated most of the players, when one stronger one with a flaming sword stepped up to fight. Look man, you don't want to mess with me. The player simply attacked. His flaming sword was really strong and kept setting me on fire. Yeah, okay, I see why people don't like Dragon's fire breath. Ouch! He was tough, but my attacks were getting the job done. I could tell he was getting weak and I got him lined up with the edge. Have a good flight! I hit him hard, sending him flying over the edge. Just then, I felt the energy surge through me and I grew into an even bigger dragon with more hearts. Yes, I feel amazing! Just then, I heard Siveth let out a cry. She was in trouble. I looked and saw she had been captured by Steve. Ha ha ha! Say goodbye to your little friend. Steve ran out of the base with Siveth in chains. I've got to stop him. I ran out of the base, but two more of Steve's players were waiting for me. They weren't very strong, but they gave Steve enough time to get away. I knocked them out, but it was too late. Hang on, Siveth. I'll find you. On days 54 to 57, I got out the horn and gave Alex a call. She arrived soon after. Zozo, you look so sad. What's wrong? They got Siveth. I've never felt so hopeless. Do you know where they might be taking her? I'm sorry, Zozo. I really wish I could help, but I have no idea where they could be going. I could tell Alex felt really bad, and she offered me some raw beef to cheer me up. Look, we'll find her. In the meantime, let's get this place fixed up. You won't be of any use to Siveth if they come back and capture you too. I agreed, and Alex and I got to work repairing the base. We had soon finished up the repairs, but I was still feeling a little bit down. One thing that I thought might help though was working on the statue. Alex offered to help on that as well, which made me grateful to have a friend in her. I was so worried about myself and my problems, I hadn't really thought much about what Alex was going through. Thanks for all of your help, Alex. I know you're going through a lot too, so it means a lot you are willing to help me. Anytime, Zozo. Now take care. I've got some things to take care of. I said goodbye and got ready for bed. Tomorrow I would figure out what I needed to do to save Siveth. On days 58 to 62, I headed into the mines. I didn't know where I needed to go to find Siveth, but I knew I needed to be stronger before I could do anything anyway. As I explored the mines, I was suddenly attacked by silverfish. Ah, these guys have always grossed me out. They were quick little buggers and hard to hit. Lucky for me though, I was able to take them out without taking too much damage. I continued into the mines and soon found some diamonds. Excellent, this is just what I need. I swung my pickaxe and gathered up lots of diamonds. I was going to have much better gear now. With all of my diamonds collected, I made my way back out of the mines. Back in my base, I got right to work crafting all of the diamond gear that I could. Steve wasn't going to know what hit him. On day 63 to 66, I woke up with a brilliant idea. I might not know where Steve is, but I know someone who might. And something tells me they are not going to be happy to see me. I took off towards the village I had saved days earlier. It was time to have a chat with the villager who ratted me out. As I arrived in the village, I saw my friend from earlier. I explained the situation to him as well as who I was looking for. I'm sorry to hear it, but I can't say I'm surprised. Billiam has always been the village rat. I know just where you can find him. We headed off and found Billiam. Whoa, 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 you're uh, bigger than the last time we saw you. I am. I'm quite a bit stronger too. I can break little villagers like you with no problem. Oh wow, uh, yeah, well, you're not gonna do that, are you? That's up to you. My home was attacked by Steve and his goons. My friend was taken prisoner. I can't forgive this, but I might be able to look past it if you tell me where I can find her. I I'm sorry, but I, I don't know where they might have taken her. Uh-oh, that's the wrong answer. I took a deep breath and got ready to blast him. Wait, I'm telling the truth. I don't know where they would have taken her, but I can tell you where to find Steve's messenger that I talked to. I thought about it and decided that was probably the best thing I was going to get from this guy. All right then, looks like today's your lucky day. William spilled everything he knew about where I could find this messenger. After he had told me everything, I headed out. Something tells me Billiam is not going to be very welcome in his village anymore. Sounds like that's in the best interest of everybody. On day 67 to 70, I arrived at the fortress that Billiam had told me about. I charged up to the base and immediately started attacking the guards. Where is your leader? Where is Siveth? The guards weren't interested in my questions and simply did their best to fight me off. 
but my friend was in danger and nothing was going to stop me. Out of my way, Tin Heads. As I fought my way through, I soon came across an even bigger guard. This guy was tougher than the first ones, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. He swung at me and did some serious damage. It really hurt, but I swung back and was able to take him out. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I had made it into the castle and more of the big guys were trying to take me down. They swung, I dodged, and knocked their blocks off. Hang on, Siveth, I'm coming! On day 71 to 74, I had officially made it into the fortress. It was as if the whole base had been alerted to my presence as every bad guy in the place was swarming in on me. I don't care how many of you there are, I'm going to make it to the top. As I knocked guard after guard out of my way, I eventually found myself inside a library. Wait a second, what's this? I had found some kind of special item. With this, I have the strongest spike attack I can get. Excited with my new ability, I immediately put it to the test. There were some guards up on the balconies, and I managed to take them out. Oh yeah, whoever this guy is, he's in for a real surprise. On day 75 to 78, I made it to what looked like the lair of the castle's boss. You there, you must know where Steve is keeping his prisoners. Tell me, or else. Heh, <laughs> you really think I'm gonna help a dragon? Look at me. Steve has been stealing the power of the dragons to make us stronger, and there's no way you'll be able to defeat me. What? What does he hope to gain from all of this? Not only will he finally destroy all dragons, but he will become a powerful dragon himself. Then no one can stop us. Yeah? Well, this dragon isn't going to let that happen. Bring it on! The henchman and I started to fight. I did my best to fight him off, but since he had been given dragon powers, he was incredibly strong. This wasn't going to be a simple fight. Do you really think Steve will let you live your life once he's king? He's going to turn on anyone who has even a little bit of power. Silence! You don't know what you're talking about. But it doesn't matter, because you're going to lose. It looked like there was no talking sense into this guy. The fight was getting intense, but it was time to end it. I focused all of my energy, used all of my attacks, and at long last, I won! The henchman was nearly defeated. No! How could I lose to a measly dragon? Last chance, tell me where Steve's base is. Never! The henchman leapt forward to attack me, but I took him out instead. Well, maybe there's something around here that can help me out. On day 79 to 84, I started taking a look around the castle. Wait! What's this? Inside of a chest was a bunch of golden apples. Yes. Suddenly there was a sound outside. As I ran out to look, I could see Steve in the distance and he was looking right at me. Ah, uh, Zozo, just the one I was looking for. What do you want, Steve? Where's Siveth? Who? <laughs> Who cares? All you need to know is I finally finished my potion. The power of the dragons is finally mine. I received word you were here, so I thought I'd let you be the first one to see. Steve drank down a potion and suddenly started to change. He turned into a disfigured but powerful dragon. Steve, what have you done? Ha ha ha. Here, let me show you up close. Steve took off into the air and flew toward me. I was strong, but not strong enough for this. I couldn't even fly yet. I had no choice but to run. Come on, Zozo, what's the problem? Afraid of a little fire? I kept running toward my base as Steve continued to chase me. I had to get to cover. We ran across the land and I finally snuck into my base. Steve flew around for a bit, but realized he couldn't fit inside. After a while, he left. I fear for the worst with Siveth. Is she still alive? On days 85 to 89, I got out of bed after a sleepless night. I had no idea if Steve would be waiting for me outside, and I couldn't risk going out there. I went back over to my statue. I had planned on completing it with Siveth, but I was worried I might not have that chance. I worked on completing the final part. Well, it's all done. It reminds me of Siveth, and she would have been proud of what we did here. I only hope I can avenge her and save everyone else from Steve's insanity. I was feeling more confident than before and stepped over to the ledge. Maybe I was strong enough to fly. I leapt over the edge and sure enough, I was able to get my wings going and fly. Yes, finally! I took some time to get used to flying. Luckily, it looked like Steve had left the area. I was able to get some good practice in when I heard Alex sounding off on her horn. I flew toward the sound and saw Alex was waiting for me. Zozo, you did it! You're flying! This is great news! 
Thanks. I just wish I knew where Steve's base was. Hmm. One way or another, I've got to end this. Well, I've got some good news for you. Huh? I found it. I couldn't believe it. Maybe now we could finally get revenge for all the wrongs Steve had done. Even though I was feeling stronger, though, I was still worried about how we could defeat Steve. Steve is afraid of anything that might harm him, so he likes to keep that close to him. When we get to his base, we should take a look around. There might be something there that can help. On days 90 to 94, I flew to Steve's base. As I landed outside the base, I met up with Alex. Wait a second, huh? how did you beat me here? I was flying. Oh, I have another highway set up, so I can get around pretty quick. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So have you seen Steve? Not yet. I think you should be good to head inside. I'll wait out here and let you know if Steve shows up. Sounds like a plan. Stay safe. I took off and flew over the wall, landing in the courtyard. The place was full of half-dragon guards. Oh man, what happened to you guys? As I fought off the guards, I realized that these must have been Steve's failed dragon transformation experiments. That guy was twisted. Even though they were failed experiments, they were still really strong. I was able to hold them off, but I lost some pieces of my armor in the process. Whew, okay, that was tough. Let's move in deeper and see what we can find. On days 95 to 97, I moved even deeper into the base. Jeez, this place is huge! I soon found myself in what looked to be a forge room. I decided to take a look around and see if I could find anything that could help me in my fight. There was a cool dragon statue nearby. Wow. Then I noticed a chest was near it. I wonder what could be in here. I opened the chest and saw it was full of netherite gear. This just might give me the boost I need to win the fight. I kept on exploring when suddenly I was attacked by more of Steve's minions. How many of you guys are there? I smacked as many of them out of the way as I could. If there were guys down here, I must be getting close. I was finally going to be able to get my revenge. After I defeated the last of the minions, I came face to face with another one of Steve's stronger dragon guards. The last fight against one of you was hard. Let's hope this time can be better. We both sprang into action, hitting each other and firing off different attacks. He was still really strong, but my new equipment was doing its job. I managed to get him lined up with a cliff. Hang on to your horns! I gave him a good whack and sent him flying over the edge to his doom. Bet you wish you had the power to fly. On day 98, I moved even deeper into the base. It was starting to get really cold and wet. How deep underground had I gone? More guards? No problem. At this point, I was getting pretty good at fighting these guards. That's when I realized there was a dragon in a cage nearby. It was Sivith. I defeated the last of the guards, then hurried over to the cages. Hang on, I'll get you out. I used my sonic attack and opened up the cage, freeing my small friend. I was excited to see she was still alive, but had a question to ask her. I was scared to ask, but I had to know the answer. Sivith, I'm so happy you're alive. Have you by any chance seen my mother down here? A sad expression came over Sivith's face. I have, but unfortunately she's gone. We were only both here for a short while, but I believe she saved my life. What do you mean? When Steve came to extract her powers from her, she gave him even more power than she needed to. Huh? More power? Why would she do that? That just let him turn into a dragon sooner. It's true, but you have to understand that she was out of time, and Steve would have used my power next. He was going to figure the transformation out, but your mom sacrificed herself to be sure Steve wouldn't need to hurt me too. Wow, I understand. She was always looking out for others. She also told me that she believed in you, and she knew even if Steve was able to harness dragon powers, you would be able to defeat him. She told me to give this to you when you arrived. Sivith tossed something out on the ground. Warden's heart. Wow. This was a gift to my mom from my dad. I had always heard that there was a special power inside of it that combined the power of the dragon and the warden. But before I could investigate any further, I heard a noise from Alex's horn. Steve must be here. Come on, Sivith, let's get out of here. On day 99, Sivith and I arrived back outside of the base. Alex was waiting and we hurried over to her. Watch out, Steve is. Just then, Steve came smashing down into the courtyard in his dragon form. Sorry to break up the party, but you three have been getting on my nerves. It's over, Steve. You might look like a dragon, but you will never truly be one. It's time for you to pay for your crimes. Is that so? Well, come and get me, Warden. Warden? Zozo, use the Warden's heart. I quickly grabbed the Warden's heart and activated it. I felt an amazing amount of energy flow through me, and I leveled up into my strongest, most powerful form. I can feel the full power of the Ender Dragon and the Warden within me. 
You're going down, Steve. Steve let out a growl as we started to fight. We flew around, launching our dragon's breath at each other. The sound of our battle could be heard for miles. Give it up, Steve. I have the power of the two most powerful beings in the land. You can't hope to defeat me. You're just a freaky mix of two creatures. Hey, man, look who's talking. I finally landed a powerful blow, which brought Steve down to his final heart. I soared high and dive-bombed him, delivering the final blow. Ah, uh, no! Steve started to explode as his head spun violently. His entire being was glitching out of existence. And stay out of our land. On day 100, Sivith, Alex, and I all made it back to our base. We had lost our families and close friends, but together we would be our own new family. And if anyone else was in trouble, we'd be here to help them out. On day one, I spawned in as a witch. Huh, I'm so small, but it looks like I'm a witch. I only have four hearts. I better be careful while I figure out where I am and what's going on. I looked around the forest where I spawned in. Hello, any other witches around? Where are my witches at? But there was no one around, just the tall trees. I was so busy looking up at the tall trees, I didn't see a man appear from behind one. He was huge, and he looked angry. I've got you now, evil witch. You won't attack my village. Why is he calling me evil? I don't feel evil, but I am a witch, and usually witches are bad. I was confused, but I didn't have time to figure out my confusion. The man was rushing at me with a sword. I started darting between the trees, trying to get away from him. Maybe I could climb a tree and get away. I quickly made it higher than the man. I thought I was in the clear until I ran into a beehive. Bees swarmed out of the hive and flew right at me. Oh no, they think I'm attacking them. Bees, I don't want to hurt you. Don't attack me. They didn't listen. I had to escape before they stung me to death. I quickly looked around and realized the tree I was in was right next to a lake. Bees won't follow me into the water. I have to dive in. I dove into the water and the bees stayed out. They knew better than to try and follow me in. The man was still waiting on the shore, though. Evil witch, I see you in the water there. I don't have a boat with me, but I'm coming back with one and I'll get you. The man was waving his sword at me from the edge of the lake. There was no way I could swim to shore, but I saw a tiny island in the middle of the lake. I have to get to that island. It's my only hope of safety. I swam to the island and crawled out of the water. I was exhausted. The island was quiet and I didn't see any creatures. I saw a tree with an opening into the trunk. I crawled in. What a rough first day. I have to get more powerful if I'm going to make it in this place. Wherever I am. I fell asleep immediately. On day two, I woke up and crawled out of my tree hole. It's quiet here. Maybe I can take some time to figure out why that man called me an evil witch. I don't feel evil. I thought about it for a while. I realized it made sense that he called me evil because witches are always evil. So why do I feel good? Is it possible that I spawned as a good witch? It seemed crazy, but it also felt true. I felt better after figuring this out, but then I realized I had a big problem. All the good people are going to think I'm evil because I'm a witch, but I can't go to other witches for help because they'll know I'm good. What am I going to do. I felt helpless for a moment, but that was a waste of time. First, I need a safe place to live. Second, I need to protect myself and prepare in case I have to fight. Oh, I don't know if I can help you with the fighting part, but why don't you live right here? I looked around, trying to figure out who was talking. Look down, silly. I looked down and saw a frog sitting on a rock on the edge of the lake. Hi there. I can tell you that this island is a safe place to stay. You can live in that tree you slept in. The only thing is... Before the frog could finish talking, I felt something land on my head. Ah, a spider! is on my head. No, 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 don't attack it. The frog's warning came too late. I had made the spider angry. It rushed at me to attack. How was I going to defend myself? Grab the potion behind you. I spun around and saw a small bottle on the ground. I had no idea what it was. Throw it at the spider, quick. I threw the potion at the spider and took it out. Thanks, buddy. I need to know a lot more about potions and what I can do as a witch. But right now, I need to rest. Go ahead. I was going to tell you that the spider was the only thing to watch out for, but you got it. You should be safe, but I'll keep an eye out. On day three, I needed to learn more about potions, since they seemed like a pretty great weapon to use, especially for a witch. I walked back to the shore and found my frog friend. He was sitting on his lily pad. Thanks again for your help, buddy. Can you tell me more about potions? I don't know much about potions. I'm just a frog. Then how did you know I should grab one and throw it? Because another witch used to live on this island, and I watched her a lot. She never noticed me, though. Look around. I think she left a lot of stuff here when she left. I decided to explore the island and see if the frog was right. I walked towards the middle of the island, into the trees. In the middle of the trees, I found a big magical looking purple tree and what looks like a rundown house. Huh, I wonder if this is where the witch lived. I decided to go inside and explore some more. I walked in. Suddenly a bat flew at my face. I was about to fight back when I realized it wasn't squeaking. It was talking. Get out of my master's house. You don't belong here. Sorry, I was just exploring and trying to figure out how to be a witch. I'm really new to this. My name is Zozo. Oh my gosh, you're a witch too. Hi, Zozo. I didn't even realize. I thought you were that crazy guy coming back to destroy everything. Oh yeah, that must be the 
same guy who attacked me as soon as I spawned. What's the deal with him? He's a villager who lives on the other side of the lake. He's always been weird, but a few years ago his son disappeared and he became convinced that a witch took him. Now he's hunting down and hurting every supernatural creature he can find. What's a supernatural creature? It's basically any creature that has magical or weird powers. Witches? Zombies? You get the idea. But aren't all those creatures bad anyway? No, that's just a myth. Most of them are bad, but there are some good ones too. I mean, look at you. I can tell you're not evil. I wanted to keep talking to the bat about good and evil creatures, but it was getting late and I hadn't found any potions or anything else to defend myself. Hey bat, thanks for the info, but it's getting late and I should get back to my shelter. Why don't you just sleep here? Well, the house is kind of falling apart. There's no roof, walls. Yeah, but you'll be safe here. The witch who lived here before cast a spell on this spot. Okay, sounds good to me. Tomorrow I can start rebuilding the house. On days four to five, I found an old stone axe outside stuck in a tree. It was in bad shape, but it'd do. It broke when I was on the second tree, but I had gotten all the wood I needed. I worked on rebuilding the witch's house so that I would have a sturdier shelter and made good progress. Then I realized I hadn't eaten anything since I got here, and I was running out of energy. Hey, Bat, do you have a name? The witch always called me Batty. Okay, Batty, do you know where I can find food around here? Oh, I forgot to tell you. The witch always had to leave the island to find enough food. She had a boat, but she took it with her when she left. All right, I guess I'll have to swim across to find food. Here, take a couple of potions with you. The witch left some behind, and you might need them until you learn how to make your own. I wasn't worried because I already knew I was a strong swimmer. I walked back to the shore and got ready to swim. Are you going to swim across the lake? My frog friend was back. Yep, that's the plan. I need to find food and Batty told me there's none here for me. Batty is right, but are you sure swimming across is a good idea? Crazy Man is out there and he said he would come back with a boat. The frog had a good point, but I really didn't have a choice. I had to find food fast and building a boat would take too much time. I jumped into the lake and started swimming. On day six to eight, I was swimming across the lake. It was a long distance, but I had to find food. I told you I'd be back, evil witch. I'll get you now. Oh no, the crazy guy is back and he has a boat. The crazy guy was coming right at me and his boat was fast. I knew I couldn't let him get close enough to use his sword on me. I haven't had a chance to craft any weapons yet, but I have to defend myself. What are these potions Batty gave me? I started treading water so I could get the potions out of my pocket. I pulled out one bottle. What does this say? Potion of harming? Sounds like what I need. I was so focused on the potions that I completely forgot I had stopped moving, but the crazy guy hadn't stopped. He was coming right at me. You foolish witch. You're no match for me. Take that. How could I have been so silly? I let the crazy guy get too close and he hit me with a sword. Ouch, that hurt. He had really brought down my health and I didn't have that much health to spare. Okay, here goes nothing. Watch out, crazy guy. It's potion time. I threw the potion right in his face. Oh, the evil witch has used her terrible magic on me, but your silly potion is no match for my sword. I wasn't going to last much longer if I didn't do something fast. I frantically grabbed another bottle out of my pocket. Exploding potion. I guess I know what this does. I threw the potion at the back of the boat and the end just blew up. The boat started sinking. The crazy guy jumped out of his boat, but I didn't wait around to see what happened. I swam as fast as I could to shore. When I reached the shore, I was exhausted. I turned around and saw the crazy guy bobbing in the water, moving so slowly towards the shore. Does this guy even know how to swim? Doesn't look like it, which is good to keep in mind. You can run now, evil witch, but you know I'll find you again, and next time, you won't be so lucky. I ran into the forest. I was so tired, but my hunger bar was getting really low. I had to eat something now, or I wouldn't be able to keep going. I wasn't looking where I was going, and I ran right into a tree with some apples. It's not much, but this should be enough food to keep me going until I find more. I ate the apples and felt better, but I was so tired. I decided to hide out for the night and keep searching for food in the morning. On days 9 to 10, I left the forest and walked into some fields. Are those farms? There must be food on farms. I ran toward the first farm I saw. The fields were full of vegetables. I grabbed as many carrots and potatoes as I could fit in my pockets. Hey, who are you? Why are you stealing my crops? I looked up to see the farmer on his front porch, and he looked angry. Hey, aren't you that evil witch my neighbor told me about? Get off my farm. He grabbed a crossbow and started shooting arrows at me. Okay, I can take a hint. I'm getting out of here. I wasn't fast enough, and one of his arrows hit me. Oh no, I'm almost out of hearts. I realized there was one more potion for Batty that I hadn't used yet. I pulled it out of my pocket and read the label. Potion of healing. Sounds like what I need. I gulped down the potion and suddenly felt a ton of energy jolt through my body. I looked down at myself. I was bigger. I don't know what's in that potion, but it gave me 10 hearts and I turned into a bigger witch. I feel so much stronger and faster. I was so fast that I was able to dodge the rest of the arrows the farmer was shooting at me. I better not see you back on my farm, witch, and I'm gonna tell my neighbor I saw you. He's coming for you. I kept running into the fields. On days 11 to 12, I was still running through the fields. I had so much energy. I saw mountains in the distance. How far had I gone? I better not get too far from the lake. I need to get back to base soon. As I got closer to the mountains, I decided it was time to turn around. I had grabbed enough food from the farmer to last a while. Then I noticed a little hut at the bottom of the mountain. Did someone live there? Someone came out of the hut. It was another witch.
witch. Aren't witches usually bad? I better run again. Wait, wait, come back. I want to help you. I didn't know if I should believe her, but I felt strong enough to find out. If she was lying to me, I could run or fight. Won't you come inside? You're the first good witch I've seen in so long, other than myself. You're a good witch too? Yes, come inside and I can explain everything. I walked behind her into her hut. Inside, I saw shelves full of bottles, a large table, a huge cauldron with smoke coming out of it, and a door leading to another room. Wow. It's so amazing to meet another good witch. It's been so long I worried I was the only one left. You see, good witches are incredibly rare. So much so that people don't even know or believe we exist. That means most people hunt us down and hurt us before ever finding out we're good and want to use our magic to help them. Well, that's a bummer, but at least I know I wasn't crazy for thinking I was a good witch. You are good, I can tell. I want to teach you everything I know to help you survive. The witch started to tell me about being a good witch. She told me about all the different types of potions I could brew and the materials I needed to brew them. She also explained explained about the different types of weapons I could build to defend myself and how to get food. Suddenly, we heard the sound of yelling in the distance. Did someone follow you here? No one has ever come this close to my hideout until now. Oh no, I stole some crops from a farmer and he got angry. He said his neighbor was hunting me. I think he was talking about this crazy guy who keeps trying to hurt me. They must have seen where I was heading. The man hunting you isn't some crazy guy. He used to be a wonderful person. He was a successful trader, friendly to everyone. He had a son who came with him on all his trading missions. He was teaching his sons a business. I knew him. You see, I didn't always live here. I used to live on a beautiful island with my bat friends. Wait, you're the witch who used to live on the island? That's where my base is. Batty has been helping me. Oh, I'm so glad my old home is helping someone. Batty is a good friend. I loved living there, but I was chased away. One day, the traitor's son disappeared. I know, I know. He thinks a witch stole his son, and now he's hunting all supernatural creatures. I've heard the story. I need to get out of here so your hideout stays a secret. The witch tossed out an item that looked like a bag for me, and I grabbed it before running out the door. But wait, you don't know the whole story. I have to get out of here before they find you. Come back when you can. I haven't told you the most important thing. I took off running across the field and just hoped the farmer and the trader wouldn't follow me. On days 13 to 15, I kept running across the fields towards the forest. I knew I had to get back to base so I could start brewing potions and making weapons. As I was running, I realized there were little holes all around me. What is up with these holes? I better be careful so I don't step in one. A rabbit popped out of one of the holes and then another one. Pretty soon, the field was full of rabbits. Oh, aren't they so cute? I wish I could stop and pet them, but... Ah, what are you doing? The rabbits were jumping up and biting me. Aren't you rabbits supposed to be nice? What are you all doing? Stop biting me! I really didn't want to hurt the rabbits because something didn't seem right. But I also couldn't let them keep biting me. Maybe there's something in this witch bag that can help me without hurting them. I pulled out a bottle. Potion of slowness. Sounds good. Sorry, rabbits, but something is wrong with you, and I don't know what it is. I threw the potion and ran. The rabbits were too slow to follow me. I wonder if this is what the witch was trying to tell me, that the animals are acting strangely. I reached the edge of the forest and ran in. Suddenly, a squirrel jumped on me and started biting me. What is going on with all these animals? Why are they attacking me? By that point, I had been bitten so many times that I was losing health. I saw more squirrels running through the trees after me, but I had reached the lake. I dove into the lake, and the squirrels didn't follow me. I swam across the lake and made it back to base. On day 16 to 19, I had planned to start making potions and weapons, but I had forgotten that my house wasn't built. Oh, I guess my weapons will have to wait. I need to build my house for protection, especially with all these animals behaving so strangely. I might not be as safe here as I thought. Hey, Zozo, you're back. What you doing? Oh, hi, Batty. I need to build up my house, but there's hardly any wood or stone around here. Any suggestions on where to find materials? Sure, go that way and you should find everything you need to get started. I made a wooden pickaxe before I started heading in the direction Batty was pointing. It was part of the island I hadn't explored yet. Batty was right. There was an abandoned lumber mill, so I started grabbing as much wood as I could find. But I also needed to find stone. Batty said there would be everything I needed, so there must be stone somewhere. I came out of the other side of the trees and realized I had reached the lake again, but I hadn't explored this beach. Wow, there's tons of stone here. Batty was right. Most of the stone was closer to the water, so I walked down to start collecting it. A drowned came out of the water and towards me. I didn't have any weapons or anything with me, but I felt so much bigger and stronger. When the drowned got close, I just started punching. Take that! I'm sick of being attacked. Go away! The drowned backed off and went back into the water. I grabbed all of my materials and went back to the house. Now I was ready to get started making things. On days 20 to 22, it was time to cook up some potions and make some better tools and weapons. Let's see what good stuff she gave me. I used the bag item the witch had given me and saw that it filled my inventory with cobblestones, a blaze rod, glass bottles, and lots of things that looked like dust, dreams, and more. There was also a small book. Good witch, here's what you need.
need to get started brewing potions. First, you need to build your brewing stand. That's what the cobblestones and blaze rod are for. Once you've built that, take a glass bottle and some of the nether wart. Combine them and you'll have an awkward potion. The book had more pages, but I was excited to get started. I followed her instructions. Cool, a brewing stand. All right, let's cook up some awkward potions. I got a little too excited and made a bunch of bottles. Once you have an awkward potion, you can take the different ingredients in my bag and add them to it. That's how you make different types of potions. I spent hours grabbing ingredients and combining them into potions. When I was almost out of glass bottles, I decided to take a break. Wow, looks like you made a ton of potions. Good job, but you should probably also make a weapon. Why? Look at all these great potions I have now. Yeah, but what happens if you're attacked and run out of potions? You should have a weapon just in case, like a sword or an axe. All right, I guess I need to go back out for more materials to make a sword. I decided to go back to the beach where I found all the stone. Maybe there would be other materials there too. I walked over to the beach and started digging, but then I heard a noise. I looked up and there were three more drowns coming at me. Ugh, these guys again? And there's more of them. At least this time I remembered to bring some potions with me. Those drowns moved fast, and before I could grab a potion, they started attacking me. I finally found my potion and threw it, and they went away. Hey, looks like one of those weirdos dropped something. What is this thing? I picked up what looked like a giant fork. It looked sharp, so I thought it could be a weapon. I decided to stop searching and bring it back to Batty. Whoa, Zozo, you found a wow. trident. Did a drowned drop it? Those are so rare. Cool. I decided to take my new weapon and walk down to the other beach to see if my frog friend was around. When I got there, I heard a strange noise coming from above me. I looked up. You may have destroyed my boat, but I'm back and ready to destroy you, evil witch. Just try throwing your potions up here. It was the crazy trader again. And this time, he was wearing a crazy outfit that looked like armor, flying right above me, getting ready to swoop down with his sword. The way he was moving around, I knew it would be hard to hit him with a potion. Throw your trident! That sounded like my frog friend. How did you get a trident, evil witch? Do you even know what to do with it? I didn't have time to look around. I just aimed and threw the trident as hard as I could. My trident was a direct hit, and as it dropped back down, I caught it. Ouch, that hurt! Hey, you dented my armor! How did you get so strong? I threw my trident again, and pieces of his armor started falling. No, you're destroying my armor! How could I have known you had a trident? I knew that with one more hit, I could take him down, but he knew it too. You may have won this battle, witch, but I'll still win the war. He flew away, and I felt confident I could beat him next time. On days 23 to 26, I went back to the base and decided to go inside and check on Batty. What happened? You look like you were in a fight. Yeah, that crazy guy came back again. This time he was flying and he had armor, but I fought him off with my trident. That's a relief. You should probably prepare in case he comes back. He was right. I needed to make this place more secure. My house was nice, but I needed something bigger and stronger. I decided to build a fortress around my house. Batty had helped me out by bringing a huge pile of wood. I started building up the walls, working as fast as I could. Eventually, the walls rose up around my house, and it was starting to look like a fortress. But there was something else missing, too. This island needed some decoration. I've got it. I'll build a nice big statue. That'll liven the place up. I got to work on the statue. I didn't have much in the way of materials, but I at least made a good start. I know it's not much to look at yet, but do you have any guesses what it will be? Suddenly, Batty flew up to me. Hey, you know you didn't finish going through the witch bag. You should see what else is in there. I reached into the bag and pulled out what looked like a diary. It had a lock on it, but the lock fell open when I touched it. I guess it was a witch thing. I opened the diary and read the first page. The Good Witch Diary. Top secret. But if you are liking the video, make sure you search for other videos. Just search for Z-O-Z-O Z -O and see the other great adventures Zozo has been on. On days 27 to 31, I wanted to make sure we had enough food. In a perfect world, I could get some animals, but my base was on an island and I had no idea how I could get animals there. Well, the easiest way to get food here is probably to farm some vegetables. Just then, Batty swooped in and he had other bats with him. Hey, Zozo! Meet my family! Now that we have a fortress, I decided it was safe to go get them. They've been hiding ever since that crazy guy made the first witch leave. They're excited to help us out. That's great, Batty. I was actually just thinking about planting some crops. Could your family go out and find me some seeds? Sure thing. We'll be back. Once the bats flew off, I decided to explore the part of the island I still hadn't visited to see if there was a good place to farm. After a couple minutes, I found a clearing in the trees that got a lot of sun. It looked like the perfect place to plant seeds, except that I noticed something strange in the shadows. Is that slime? Gross. As I looked closer, I realized there were slimes all in the shadows, and they were jumping closer to me. I heard a loud splat. Gross, a slime attacked me. And also, that hurt. I had no idea if potions would work against slimes, so before wasting any, I decided to go back to the fortress and see what Batty knew about slimes when he got back. On days 32 to 35, Batty and his family came back with lots of seeds. Thanks, Batty and family. These seeds are awesome, but we have a problem. I found the perfect spot for a farm, but it's filled with slimes, and one of them attacked me. How can I get rid of them? Oh man, I was afraid of that. I forgot to tell you that there's a little swamp on the side of the island, and I've heard rumors about slime sightings, but I never 
never saw one, so I thought maybe we were safe. Great. That swamp must be right next to the spot I want to put my farm. Is there a potion or something I can use to get rid of them? You can defeat slimes and they'll drop slime balls. But actually, maybe it's a good thing they're here. You can use slime balls to make all kinds of useful stuff. When I heard that, I decided to go back with my trident that instant. After all, I didn't want the slimes to disappear, and I wanted those slime balls. When I got to the swamp, I saw the slimes were still there. They were different sizes. One was huge, a couple were medium, and there were a few little ones. What are you, like a slime family? I didn't wait for an answer. Can slimes even talk? I immediately threw my trident at the big slime. When it hit the slime, two medium slimes appeared. Wait, what? I thought I was going to get rid of you. Now I just have more slimes to deal with. I kept attacking the medium slimes, and they turned into smaller slimes. This was turning out to be a much bigger project than I planned. Finally, I was left with nothing but slime balls, so I collected all of them. I also spotted some materials that I knew would be perfect for my statue, so I grabbed some of those too before going back to my witchy fortress. Thanks a lot, Batty. You could have warned me that hurting slimes makes more slimes. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Batty, we need to work on your memory. Seems like you forget a lot of things. Every single one of his Bat family members agreed with me, rolling their eyes at Batty. On days 36 to 39, it was time to farm. Now that Batty's whole family was back, we needed some serious food. I went back to the clearing to plant some seeds. Hello, any more slimes out there? I didn't see a single green slime, so I decided it was safe to start planting. Hi there. I spun around and saw a little bat. I'm Batty's little sister. I wanted to come talk to you away from Batty because I don't want to hurt his feelings, but his bad memory is becoming a real problem. Yeah, I'm starting to notice that. But he's forgetting some really important things. Like when we flew around collecting seeds, we saw and heard a lot. The crazy trader has been hunting down a lot more supernatural creatures, including a lot who are actually good. Since when are so many creatures good? They just are. But it's hard to tell because the evil ones give everyone a bad reputation. But it's starting to get really serious. His crazy brain is telling him that even regular creatures are evil. Even bats. Pretty soon, no one will be safe. Wow, you aren't kidding. Batty's memory is really bad. We need you to take down the crazy trader before you can do any more damage. Can you do it? I thought about how much stronger I had gotten. I think I can. I'll do it. But first, I need to grow this food so I have enough energy to fight. I kept planting until all of the seeds were planted. Then I went back to the fortress where I did some more work on the statue before calling it a night. On days 40 to 43, Batty and his family came back from the big forest and told us about animals acting strangely. Zozo, you won't believe it. Normally when we fly through the trees, the squirrels and rabbits say hello to us. Today they all tried to attack us. We had to fly high above them to stay away. What is going on? The bats were describing the same weird things I had noticed before, but I had forgotten all about them in the other chaos. Maybe I should go investigate in case there's something serious going on. I decided to swim over to the forest and take another look. I walked down to the lake and dove in. As soon as I walked onto the beach, something didn't feel right. A bunch of crabs dug out from the sand, surrounding me. I don't think I can take on this many. Suddenly, a potion landed on some of them, clearing away. I turned around and saw Batty and his family. They swooped in and started fighting the crabs while Batty himself approached me. They'll keep fighting off the crabs so you can get to the forest. Just keep going. Batty he went back to join his family as I ran as fast as I could into the forest. On days 44 to 49, I explored the forest looking for animals. I didn't want to be attacked, but I needed to figure out what was going on, especially if Batty and his family were now in danger too. I searched through the trees, but couldn't find a single animal. This was even more confusing. The forest is always filled with animals. Where did they all go? I kept walking until I reached the fields and still didn't see a single animal. This was so suspicious. Eventually, I turned around and went back to the lake. This time, there were no crabs anywhere. I swam across easily. When I reached the island, I saw my frog friend. Hey buddy, long time no see. How's it going? My frog friend didn't answer me. In fact, he didn't move at all. Hey, are you okay? What's going on? I walked closer to get a better look. The frog turned to look at me, and his eyes were bright red. Stop investigating the animals, witch. They're under my control. And if you interfere with my plans, I'll take you down. Uh -oh. The frog was under some kind of spell, and he was on my island. The danger was getting too close to home, and I was so worried about my frog friend. Before I could do anything else, he jumped into the water and swam away. I could only hope he would be safe. I went back to the fortress to talk to Batty. This was really serious. On days 50 to 53, Batty suggested that I should keep reading the witch diary to see if it could tell us anything about what was going on. I turned to the second page. Before you turn any more pages, I just want to say that I hope you're subscribing to this channel and enjoying more videos. Okay, the witch was really into subscriptions. Moving on, I got to page 3. I'm keeping this diary after the trader made me run from my home. I need to write down the true story in case I can never tell anyone in person. Everyone believes that the trader went crazy after a witch stole his son. This is not the truth. Before he went crazy, he traveled far into the mountains and met an old wizard who cast a spell on him. The wizard wanted to keep his son as an apprentice, so he made the trader go crazy, believing a witch had stolen his son. The wizard is the true enemy. Destroy him and break his spell. Okay, this was getting really crazy, but it also made sense. 
sense. I wondered if the wizard was also controlling the animals, but I realized I was too hungry to keep reading. I had to go see if my crops were ready. On days 54 to 57, I went back to my farm. There were so many vegetables. I gathered as many as I could carry to bring home. When I got back, Batty was surprised at how much food I had. Batty, things are getting really scary out there. I want to make sure I have enough food in case we need to hide out, and I want to take care of you and your family. I also wanted to build up our defenses. I decided to build a tower so that I could see everything around us and see if danger was coming. I also decided to build a potion launcher in case we needed to defend inside the walls. Once it was built, I needed to see if it worked. I flipped the switch and fired off some potions. Wow, those went really far. I think this will work perfectly. I had some time, so I also decided to work on the statue. It's really coming along nicely. Can you tell what it is now? On days 58 to 62, I woke up to the sound of screeching. It was Batty and his family, sounding the alarm. The traitor is coming. The traitor is coming. Oh no. Now that I knew why he was crazy, I didn't want to hurt him either. I ran up to the tower and saw the traitor flying towards me. However this guy was flying, I wanted to learn how to do it. Hey man, stop attacking me. I don't want to hurt you. I know the wizard cast a spell on you. The traitor swooped towards me and I noticed for the first time his red glowing eyes, just like my frog friend. I'm not here to attack you this time, at least not right this second. Huh? What did he mean by that? Suddenly he pulled out a bottle and threw it at me. I can't see anything. What was that potion you threw at me? <laughs> a blindness potion. Two can play at the potion game, which, and now you can't see what I'm doing next. <laughs> he was right. I couldn't see anything. I had to get back downstairs to get some milk, which Batty had told me would give me my vision back. I stumbled down the stairs and drank some milk, but it took me so long, I was worried about what the trader did while I was blind. I was so exhausted from the ordeal, I decided to get some sleep. On days 63 to 66, I woke up and went back to the witch diary. I had stopped reading before, but now I knew I had to keep going and figure out what was going on with the animals and how to defeat the wizard. I opened the diary where I stopped reading before. Before I keep telling the sad story, I really hope that you're enjoying the video so far. If you like it, why don't you subscribe to our channel for more? I wasn't even going to try to understand that one. A warning for you. The wizard has been growing stronger every year. Soon, he'll be too powerful to defeat. You will know that his power is becoming too strong when he takes control of all good creatures in this land. Even the nicest animals will turn on you. This is a sign that you must defeat the wizard now. If you wait, it will be too late. My heart sank. Now I knew why the animals were acting crazy, and it meant that the wizard was growing too powerful to stop. On day 67 to 70, I knew I had to find the wizard and stop him before he took over the world. Unfortunately, I had no idea where he was. I didn't even know where the traitor was hiding. I started gathering supplies when suddenly I heard a familiar voice behind me. What are you doing? I turned around. Hi, Batty. Where have you been? I haven't seen you since the traitor was here. I looked at Batty and gasped. His eyes were glowing red. Oh no, Batty. Are you under the wizard's control too? The wizard is my master now. Thanks to the traitor who cast the wizard's spell on me, he sent me here to tell you you should give up now because you will never find the wizard. He's hidden where no one will ever find him. Batty flew away. I was so sad. My closest friend was under an evil spell. Psst, Zozo, over here. Batty's sister flew into the room. I followed the traitor when he took Batty, and I know where he is hiding. Maybe if you go to his base, you can find out where the wizard is hiding. He's in a bunker underneath the farm that he first stole vegetables from. So that's why the traitor came back, to kidnap Batty and turn him into a messenger. And no wonder the traitor kept coming. He was so close. Before I left, I made sure I still had the witch diary on me. I hadn't finished reading it yet, and it might have more important information. On day 71 to 74, I made my way back to the farm where I first stole vegetables. I didn't want to run into the farmer again, so before I actually entered his land, I had to make a plan. Batty's sister said the traitor was hiding in a bunker under the farm. If the traitor is hiding underground, he must have a secret entrance to get down there. I started walking around the farm, looking for anything unusual. I spotted a huge rock that looked really out of place on a farm. Was this his secret entrance? Suddenly, a side of the rock slid open. It was a door. I was right. I looked around, but didn't see the traitor, so why was the door opening? Then I saw Batty flying towards the rock. He was going into the traitor's base. Oh no, Batty, you really are under their control. The door slid closed. I waited a while to make sure nothing was happening, and then I snuck over to the rock. I didn't see any sign of a door. Hmm, how do you open this door? I know there must be a way. I kept looking, but couldn't figure out a way to open the door. I got frustrated and punched the door. Alarm started going off. Oh no, that was so stupid of me. I should have known they would have had defenses. I dove into some nearby plants and hid, right before strange creatures started swarming around the door. They were birds, all of them with glowing red eyes. I stayed down while the birds flew around, and they didn't see me. Then the door slid open. Who's out there? No one? Birds, pay closer attention next time. Whoever was at the door must have gotten away. The traitor closed the door again, and I knew I would have to find another way to his base. It was obvious. I would have to dig a tunnel to reach him. I was close enough that I decided to start digging right there. I knew the base was under the house, so I kept digging in that direction. On day 75 to 78, I was digging a tunnel to reach the trader's base. I knew I was getting close to the house, and the base had to be close by. I dug and dug until I saw a wooden wall. I had reached the base. I stopped to organize my inventory before I broke through the wall with my axe. How did you find me, 
evil witch. Hey man, I had to find you because you stole my friend Batty, but I don't want to fight you. I know that you're under the spell of the evil wizard. This isn't really you. What are you talking about, witch? There is no wizard. I am going to destroy all creatures responsible for taking my son away from me. He came rushing at me with his giant sword. I was scared, but I knew how much bigger and stronger I was since our first fight and all the special potions I had brewed. He swung a sword at me and I fought back, throwing potions, drinking healing potions, and stabbing at him with my trident. Evil witch, you will not stop me. I really wish this guy would stop calling me evil witch. He spun around and punched a wall and ran down another tunnel. I went to run after him, but he threw another blindness potion at me. So annoying. I put down my bag. Fortunately, I brought milk, so I drank it quickly, but not fast enough to see where he went. There was a fork where two tunnels went in different directions. I ate some of my food before I looked down both tunnels. To the right, I saw a red glow. It was his eyes. I took off running down the right tunnel, eating some more to make sure I was at full health. Soon, I reached another room. There, the trader had grabbed a giant shield in addition to his sword. This was it. I was going to have to throw everything at him and hope I could defeat him. I threw every potion I had, hitting him with one right after the other. I hadn't thought about what might happen if all the potions mixed. The trader had been knocked to the ground, and suddenly there was a black puff of smoke. When the smoke cleared, his eyes were normal. What? What happened? Where am I? Had my potion somehow broken the wizard's spell? You're in a bunker underground. You've been hunting down creatures because you thought a witch stole your son. No. No, I remember everything. I know a witch didn't steal my son. It was the wizard. He took my son and cast a spell on me so that I would think a witch had done it. He looked so sad. I think the wizard's spell was the only thing keeping me going all this time. Without the spell, I'm dying. No, let's go destroy the wizard and save your son. It's too late, but please go defeat the wizard for me. With that, the traitor disappeared. On day 79 to 84, I took one final look at the room we fought in, then went back through the tunnels of the trader's bunker. I stopped there to rest for a minute. While I was there, I decided to eat something and keep reading the witch diary. The end of this story is sad and shocking. I have been exploring the mountains where I now hide, and I discovered where the wizard lives. I snuck closer to his hideout, and there I saw something terrible. The wizard was not the wizard I knew from before. Instead, the wizard was the trader's son. He had become the wizard. Oh man, maybe it's a good thing the trader disappeared. He would be so upset to learn his son had turned into the wizard. It is hard to say but you still must find the wizard and destroy him, no matter who he is. If his power is this strong, there is no way to make him good again. I drew a map to where the wizard is hiding in the mountains. It is buried under my house on the island. Find the map, find the wizard, and destroy him. I guessed it was time to go back to the base. On days 85 to 89, I went back to the island. It was so lonely without Frog and Batty, but it was probably also good they were gone. If they were under the wizard's spell, I couldn't safely dig up the map. I went back to the house and started digging into the floor. I saw a glowing light. I kept digging until I found a secret room under the house. The room glowed with potions I had never seen before. There was a folded paper on a table, and in the corner was the trader's sword. What was it doing here? I picked up the paper and noticed a map placed next to it. Take this map and find the wizard. Use his sword, which I stole, and defeat him with it. Wow, so the witch had stolen the sword, but somehow the trader got it. When he disappeared, I guess the sword came back here. I picked it up. It was huge. Can I even swing this thing? It was too heavy for me. But that's when I spotted something. There was a chest on the table where the note was. I opened it up and saw several potions and rare items in there. The purple potion in the middle, catching my eye. I picked it up. Huh, a power-up potion. I wonder what this does. The description said, drink me, as well as that it had been brewed at the peak of witching hour. That sounded amazing, so I decided to listen to the potion and give it a try. I drank the potion down and immediately felt it start to change something inside of me. I started to grow in size, gaining hearts, and felt much stronger. Strong enough to swing a sword? I tried it, and now I could swing the sword easily. So I grabbed the map, sword, and a few of the strange glowing potions. In the other corner of the room, I spotted something interesting. Is that what I think it is? That clearly looked like a witch's broom. I think I found my way of reaching the wizard now. Now, I took out my pickaxe and dug through the collapsed door, entering a cave which led me back out. On days 90 to 94, I used the map to figure out where the wizard was hiding. Sure enough, he was in the mountains near where I had met the other witch. I needed to prepare for this battle. I looked at the glowing potions. One was a potion of invisibility, which sounded pretty useful. Another said, potion of disintegration. What was that? It's label read, do not drink me. I didn't want to use a potion that I didn't understand, so I went back to the diary. I flipped to the back of the book where the witch had made a list of all the potions and their uses. Looks like this is one of the strongest potions out there. I better use it carefully. I grabbed the bag and a bite to eat as I left my house. But before I went to confront the wizard, there was one more thing to do. Finish my statue. Patty and his family weren't around to help me this time, but I still managed to finish it. There. I think it looks pretty good. But what do you think? With everything prepared, I placed down the broom in the courtyard and climbed on, soaring up into the air and over the tree line. I flew across the lake, over the forest, over a pumpkin grove, and over the fields. Then, I saw the mountains getting closer. I saw the witch's hut, but I went past it. I didn't have any time to spare. I flew and flew up the mountainside until everything on the ground was barely visible. Looking at the edge of a steep cliff, I saw it. A great black castle. That must be where the wizard lives. I'm getting so close. Maybe I should take this invisibility potion so he doesn't see me coming. I drank the potion and turned invisible. Feeling safer, I flew up to his castle. The gate was wide open. Wow, this guy must feel pretty safe up here in the clouds.
clouds to just leave his gate open, I peeked inside. On days 95 to 98, I snuck inside the wizard's castle. Even though I was invisible, I knew I had to be quiet and careful or he would realize I was there. The castle was huge. There were so many hallways and stairs, I didn't know where to start. I had to find the wizard though, so I started walking down the darkest, scariest looking hallway. I figured that was my best shot. As I walked down the hall, I started hearing whispering voices. It was hard to understand what they were saying, but one thing I did hear. You've reached the wizard's lair and the final battle approaches. Only the strongest warrior dares to fight the wizard. If you've enjoyed this journey, prove it by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. On day 99, I kept following the voices until I reached a solid wall, blocking the rest of the hallway. Had I reached a dead end? Suddenly, I heard a voice calling out. Zozo? Zozo, where are you? It was Batty's sister again. I didn't know how she had followed me or escaped evil spells, but I was so happy to see her. Hey, I'm over here. I turned off my invisibility so that she could see me. Oh, there you are, Zozo. I came to tell you it's not a dead end. Don't worry. I've been following Batty and I know how to get in. This wall is a door. Punch the bottom right brick and you can open it. I walked towards the wall and punched a brick on the side. The wall lifted upwards, revealing a new hallway. Thanks, but now you should really get out of here. Things are about to get really crazy. Good luck, Zozo. I'll see you back at base. I went down the hallway, which ended with a staircase. At the top of the stairs, there was a big open room. Right next to the window was a huge throne, and in the throne sat the wizard. So you found me, but you still have to defeat me, and you never will. The wizard stood up and raised his hands to cast a spell. This was the moment to throw my potion of disintegration. It exploded around him, but didn't do anything. You thought you could use a potion against me? You silly witch. I am invincible to all magic except my own. What did that mean? How could he not be invincible to his own magic? Then I realized something. I had his sword. I pulled out the sword and it started glowing. It was a magical sword and it was the wizard sword. Did this mean I could destroy him with it? Where did you get that sword? That was my master sword that he gave me when I became the wizard. But another witch stole it from me. How do you have it? Doesn't matter how I got it, buddy. What matters is that I'm going to use it to destroy you. Before I could attack him, though, I felt some of the sword's power start to enter me. I grew to be even bigger with even more hearts. And now I had a cool magical effect surrounding me. I ran towards the wizard, but as soon as I got close to him, he teleported behind me. That's not good. I charged at him again, only for him to teleport away, but I could tell he was getting tired. He summoned ice spheres that circled around him as I rushed at him again. He didn't have time to teleport away, but he snared me instead, landing more firebolts on me before teleporting away again. No, oh, how are you still standing? My spell should have taken you down. I don't know, dude, but take this. Before he could do anything else, I swung the sword as hard as I could and hit the wizard. He screamed as his magic started to seep out of him. I backed away right before he vanished in a white explosion. I had defeated the wizard. Time to get out of here. I rode my broom all the way back to the base, drinking healing potions to recover on the way. As I flew over the forest, I wondered what I would find. As soon as I passed over the forest, I heard cheering. All the rabbits and squirrels had come out to welcome me home, and not a single one of them attacked me. I was so relieved and excited to get back to base. I glided across the lake and saw the crabs celebrating my return. I got to the island, and right there in front of me were Frog, Batty, and Batty's entire family. All their eyes were normal, and they were cheering. You did it, Zozo! You defeated the wizard! Batty, it's so good to see you again. I'm so happy you're free of the evil spell. Now I'm going to go inside, eat a nice big meal, and go to sleep. If another evil wizard comes back, you know where I'll be. On day one, I spawned in as Black Panther. I only have four hearts. That doesn't seem like a lot for a superhero, but I can move quickly thanks to my cat-like reflexes. And it looks like I have vibranium claws too. Neat. Hey look, there's a waterfall right behind me. And there's some kind of skeleton with a giant battle axe? What is he doing here? Uh-oh, are we about to fight? Bring it on. The skeleton ran at me and swung his weapon, but with my cat-like reflexes, I dodged him easily. I ran up behind him and hit him with my claws. These claws were really powerful. Whoa, he fell right over the waterfall. I won. Too bad I can't get any loot from that skeleton because he fell down so far. I really wanted that cool battle axe. I decided to go to the bottom of the waterfall and look to see if I could find it. When I got there, I saw that the skeleton was still standing. He ran at me again, but this time I faced him head on. He was no match. And look at that. He dropped the battle axe. It's not vibranium, but it's still pretty cool. I wonder where that skeleton got it. I decided to take shelter in a cave under the waterfall and relax for the rest of the day. On day two, I was woken up by the sounds of an angry gorilla. It had come out from the back of the cave and was trying to attack me. I looked at it a little closer and realized that it wasn't an ordinary gorilla. It was a zombie ape. Ah, get away from me, zombie. Don't make me use my new weapon. I ran away from the zombie ape and out into the sunlight where it didn't want to follow me. I guess that it was one of those mobs that take damage in the daytime. It was an undead just like the skeleton I fought yesterday. Maybe they were common in this area. I decided to leave the waterfall behind and follow the river towards the grasslands. Whoa, there are so many animals here. I could see a rhino and a giraffe, and it looked like they weren't zombies. Thank goodness. I guess I'll let them eat grass in peace, especially because I was starting to get hungry too. I saw some berry bushes, so I started punching them to gather food. 
food. Once I got enough, I refilled my canteen in the river. Surviving would be a lot easier now, and if I got into a fight, I already had some pretty good weapons. Still, I thought it might be good to build a shelter, in case the zombies came out at night. I used the battle axe I got from the skeleton to chop down trees. I soon had enough wood to make a small hut and bed. It was almost nighttime, so I went inside and went to sleep. When I woke up on day three, I noticed that there was a tree outside that wasn't there yesterday. It was really big and looked ancient and magical. There was a glowing panther spirit sitting in the branches. I made my way over to the magic tree, and the panther spirit started talking to me. Zozo, this land needs your protection. Oh, it looked like I was going to get a superhero quest. I stood there and I listened closely. We are under attack by an undead warlord to the west of the grasslands. He is turning everything into zombies and skeletons. You must stop him. An undead warlord? That sounded scary, and he was probably really strong. I'd need a lot more than four hearts to take him on, but I couldn't just ignore a quest from the panther spirit. The people and animals needed my help too, and maybe there was a way to turn the animals that had already become zombies back to normal. Journey westward, and you will find his evil lair. I spent the rest of the day gathering supplies for my journey and practicing with my weapons on any mobs I could find. On days four to five, I traveled from my hut in the grasslands all the way to the heart of the desert. According to the panther spirit, I was heading in the right direction to reach the overlord's lair. Before long, I saw a zombie boar wandering around in the sand. Oh no, looks like the overlord has already turned the animals in the desert into zombies. The zombie boar charged me, and I lost a bit of health. I had to protect myself, so I drew my battle axe and took a couple swings. I'm sorry, Mr. Boar. The fight was over in no time. I spotted an oasis nearby. I had been traveling for a long time, and night would be here soon. I didn't want to be caught outside if more zombies showed up, so I gathered some wood from the palm trees and set up camp. I had just finished my little oasis hut when a genie appeared out of thin air. I thought I was going to get three wishes at first, but then he spoke, and I knew he wasn't the nice kind of genie. Who dares come to my oasis without an invitation? I said I was sorry and that I just needed somewhere to spend the night, but the genie created a sandstorm, and suddenly the oasis was gone. He may not have granted me any wishes, but he had left an item behind in the sand. I went to pick it up, and it turned out to be a brand new pair of Roadrunner boots. Awesome, now my movement over the sand will be twice as fast. On day six to eight, I was still in the desert when I saw a gigantic archway made of bones. There was a skeleton warrior underneath it, and he was carrying an obsidian shield and spear. It didn't look like he was going to let me pass without a fight. I put my battle axe away and got my vibranium claws ready. You cannot go any further. I am the Skull Guardian, and you can't beat me. He seemed serious, but I had to try. If I couldn't win here, there was no way I could beat the Overlord. I attacked him, but even my vibranium claws couldn't get through his shield. It was too tough, even for Obsidian, and his spear kept damaging me. I was almost out of health. The only thing I could do to survive was run away. Good thing I had those Roadrunner boots. I turned around and got out of there. The Skull Guardian stayed at the archway and shouted after me. You are too weak. Come back when you are stronger. Maybe I still needed some more training. While I was running away, though, I was spotted by a group of Hoglins. I could have easily run away from them, but I was tired of running. I stopped and decided to face them. I took out my claws and defeated each and every one of them. When I defeated the last Hoglin, I suddenly felt something inside of me. I grew into an even bigger Black Panther with more hearts. I also saw that the Hoglins had dropped a ton of leather. I could use this when I got back to my base. On days 9 to 10, I went back to the grasslands to expand my hut into a base. I used some sandstone from the desert to make it into a small tower and crafted myself a full set of leather armor too. I then crafted a shovel. I felt a pull to this area for some reason, like it was calling to me. So I dug down until I hit some stone. There, I had an entrance to a mine beneath the tower now. I'd have to check it out further later. I built more furniture inside the base using wood I was able to gather from a bunch of trees in the grasslands. The one tree that I didn't use for wood was the ancient spirit tree. The panther spirit wasn't there, but I was hoping that maybe it would show up to help me again. I definitely needed some advice on how to defeat this gold guardian. If I couldn't beat him, I would never be able to defeat the overlord and save this land from zombification. On days 11 to 12, I was walking along the river when I saw the zombie ape from the cave splashing around in the water. Had it followed me all the way to the grasslands? It really might have because it noticed me and ran up to attack. I was a lot stronger now though. This ape didn't know what he was getting himself into. Sure enough, I was able to win against the zombie ape that I ran away from on day two. I looked at the river to see a water elemental emerging from below the surface. Thank you. That zombie had taken over my home behind the waterfall and last night it chased me all the way here to the grasslands. Who are you? I am the spirit of the river and I can see that you are a great hero. This land needs a protector and I'm glad you were here to save me. I'm not that great of a hero yet. I need to beat the skull guardian or I'll never save the animals. Have faith in yourself. I am friends with the panther spirit and he believes you can do this. The last time I fought against him, I didn't even damage him and he almost took all of my health. The only reason you lost to the skull guardian was because he had an enchantment cast on him that shields him from the attacks of the living. The spirit of the river handed me a potion. Drink this potion and your claws will be able to strike true. 
That should make it a fair fight. I said thank you to the spirit. If so many beings were counting on me, I couldn't give up. On days 13 to 15, I decided to check out my mine again, but first, I needed to grab my pickaxe. I still felt something drawing me to dig deeper, so I started digging down. Whoa, what's that? It was a strange material. Vibranium! Turns out, there was a lot of it just below the surface. This land must be rich in it or something. Either that, or I just discovered the only vibranium mine around. I gathered a bunch of it and went to my base to see what I could craft. It turned out, I could make a full set of vibranium armor and tools. Super! I have some serious armor now. My base is also looking way cooler. It's tricked out with vibranium walls and minecart rails. I kept the ancient tree protected in its own little courtyard and made sure to give it plenty of water. I also remembered to plant trees around the grasslands so that I get more wood in the future. On day 16 to 19, I was making my way back through the desert when I ran into a group of husks, and it looked like they wanted to meet the Black Panther up close and personal. The husks attacked me, but I fought back, clawing away at them. Take that, you dried out no good zombie, and here's one for you, you wannabe mummy. Before I knew it, I had beaten the whole group but then I heard something and turned around. There was one more husk, and this one was way bigger than the others. That's a huge husk. I wasn't scared though, and I rushed right in to face him. The huge husk hit a lot harder than his little brothers, but his skin was just as soft as theirs, and before long, he was down for the count too. You know, I was glad those husks attacked me though. It was good practice for my claws, since I knew I'd be facing the Skull Guardian soon. On days 20 to 22, I reached the archway where the Skull Guardian was waiting and challenged him to a fight. So, you think you can beat me this time? Sure I can. Watch this. I drank the potion that the water elemental gave me, and now my attacks could actually damage him. I still had to keep my guard up and dodge a spear attack, but even his shield couldn't stop my vibranium claws this time. After several hits, he finally went down and dropped a skeleton key. A skeleton key? Was this thing made from the skull of the guy I just defeated? Gross. This would probably come in handy later though, so I made sure to take it with me. My journey continued on, and soon I made it out of the desert to a wasteland. I'd have time to explore it soon, but for now, I decided to get back to my base, but not in the way you might be thinking. On days 23 to 26, I decided I didn't want to have to cross through the desert again in case I ever wanted to come back here, so I decided to build a massive tunnel back to my base. I dug down a little ways and then started tunneling in the direction of my base, placing torches as I went. It took a long time, but eventually I got to where I thought my base should be and tunneled up out of the ground. I popped up right in front of my base. How's that for good luck? When I got to the door of my base though, I saw there was a package waiting for me with a note attached to it. This must be from the water elemental. I could tell because it was all wet. The note read, Dear Zozo, you're doing great. I knew you could defeat the Skull Guardian. Included are some potions that should make your journey easier. P.S. If you're liking the video, make sure you search for other Zozo videos at Zo Zo to see more adventures he's been on. Yep, definitely weird, but when I opened the package, I saw it was full of experience potions. Nice! I drank the potions and felt myself starting to change. I grew bigger and had more hearts, too. On days 27 to 31, I upgraded my base to look a little nicer, since Black Panther is a king, after all. I started a statue outside, too, something that I knew would inspire me every time I came back to my base. I know it's only the very start, but can you tell what it is yet? Next, I laid down some track in the tunnel so I could quickly get back to the wasteland using a minecart. When my minecart ride was over, I exited the tunnel and took a look around the wasteland to see if I could find any sign of the overlord's lair. That's when I noticed a small village hidden among the rocky hills of the wasteland. The villagers there said they'd been attacked by zombies, and some of them had even gotten turned into zombies. Our iron golem is supposed to protect the village, but it's been broken for a long time. Don't worry, I have an idea for how to fix it. You're the best. On days 32 to 35, I gathered more vibranium from the mines at my base so I could use it to upgrade the village's iron golem. It would be four times as strong as an iron golem would be, so the villagers would have nothing to worry about from invading monsters. I was really starting to get creative at using vibranium in my creations, and I soon realized that the material had another special ability I could use to improve my base's defenses. Vibranium could generate force fields, and with a little bit of tinkering, I was able to make a force field dome around the whole base. Let's see those zombie animals try to get inside now. On days 36 to 39, I returned to the wasteland village and used used the vibranium to upgrade their iron golem. Now, they had their very own vibranium golem. Hooray! You saved our village! It sure does feel good to be the good guy. Now I could ask them to help me in my quest. I'm looking for the evil overlord who has been making zombies. Do you know where I can find him? No one here knows. You should go speak to the shaman of the mountains. Thanks. On days 40 to 43, I trekked up the snowy mountains and found the lair of the shaman. It was guarded by a friendly snow golem. They didn't bother me, probably because they knew what a hero I was. Inside of a long wooden house was the shaman. They had so many magical potions on their shelves, including ones I had never seen. So, you must be the one I've been hearing about. I've got an idea for something that might be able to help you in your quest. I'm all ears. I'm working on a potion that can turn zombies back into normal animals and people, but I need magic flowers from the jungle in order to complete the recipe. You can count on me, shaman. On days 44 to 49, I headed deep into the jungle in search of the flowers the shaman needed. Eventually I saw it, the hill shaped like a skull where the flowers were supposed to be. I fought my way up the hill. Eventually, I got to the top. Phew, that was a tough climb even without a bunch of mutants. No wonder the shaman needed someone 
wanted to get these for him. And then I saw them. At the very top of the hill, inside the skull, were the flowers. I ran up to the flowers and tried to pick them up, but they were stuck. I couldn't pick them. That's when I realized they weren't stuck to the ground. They were actually part of a giant plant monster. The giant plant monster rose out of the ground, the flower still on top of his head. I don't suppose you'd let me have some of your flowers. But the plant monster didn't want to talk. It wanted to fight. It was a tough enemy. I had to avoid its poisonous plant breath attack and be careful not to get punched by it. It hit super hard, but eventually I took it down and it left one of its flowers as loot. Awesome. Now I can leave this crazy place. On days 50 to 53, I returned to the shaman. I invited them to come stay at my base while they finished the potion. When we got there, I built an area for the shaman to stay and work, complete with a nice big cauldron for magical potions. Just a bit more fine-tuning and my anti-zombie potion will be complete. Thanks again for getting those flowers. You're welcome. You could have mentioned the giant poisonous plant monster, but really, I'm just glad to have helped. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Here, take this as an apology. The shaman tossed something at me. When I picked it up, I realized it gave me a new recipe. It was an upgrade ability for my suit that allowed me to build in some of the vibranium force field tech. Now when the enemies tried to hit me, I could blast them away. Now that's what I call a powerful ability. On days 54 to 57, the shaman and I went into the grasslands and tested the potion on some of the zombie animals. Wow, it actually works! We started turning animals back, one by one, until we got almost all the animals in the grasslands. We've got plenty of more where that came from back at the base. I didn't know what I'd do without the shaman. Watch out! Suddenly, the shaman pushed me aside. I was about to ask why when a giant beam of pure evil power shot down from above, and in seconds, the shaman was gone. Oh no, that must have been the overlord. He must have been aiming for me. I started to run, zigging and zagging as beams shot down from above. I kept running until I saw a cave and jumped in, just before a beam could hit me. On days 58 to 62, I waited in the cave until I didn't hear any more powerful beams outside. But what I did hear was something deeper in the cave. I turned around to see a spider leaping at me. Time to try out my new force field ability. I blasted him. Looks like it works just fine. I practiced with my new force field ability some more, and when I was sure I had the hang of it, I finally defeated the spider. With the spider defeated, I remembered the shaman and how quickly the overlord's attack had appeared. How was I ever going to defeat him? It didn't matter. I had to figure out a way, since that's what superheroes do. I knew there was still a lot of anti-zombie potion left, so at least the shaman's sacrifice was not in vain. Soon, this land would be safe from zombies. I would make sure of it. On days 63 to 66, I snuck out of the cave and went back to my base, where I gathered up all the anti-zombie potions the shaman had made. Before I left, I wanted to do some work on my statue. I needed something to cheer me up after all that had happened, and I knew a great statue like this would encourage me every time I saw it. So what about now? Can you tell what I'm making yet? I took anti-zombie potions back to the wasteland, and every time I encountered a group of zombies, I used the potions on them to turn them back into villagers. Then I sent them to go live at the village, protected by the vibranium golem. The villagers were happy to see so many people get changed back, and sent me a letter to say thank you. Keep it up! We've got more villagers now than ever before! Our little village keeps growing, just like your number of subscribers! And we hope everyone watching joins your village of subscribers too! Oh, thanks guys! On day 67 to 70, while exploring the wasteland and saving more villagers from their zombified fate, I finally saw something far off in the distance. It was the evil lair that the panther spirit and the river spirit had told me about. I was sure that the overlord was in there. I could feel it, but it wasn't going to be easy getting to it since I could see that between me and the base was an enormous chasm. It looks like it went all the way around the base with no clear way to get across. I didn't have much time to think about it though because suddenly I was attacked by a group of zombie apes. You guys again? Haven't you had enough of being zombies? I went to throw an anti-zombie potion at them when I realized I was all out. Oh no! I didn't want to fight them, but I was surrounded. It didn't look like I'd have much of a choice. With no way to turn them back to normal apes, I had to deal with them the old-fashioned way. With my claws. There were a lot of undead apes, but I was able to put all my skills and abilities to use, dodging their attacks and rushing in to land my own. Finally, the last of them had been taken care of. Phew, sorry about that, guys. I promise to make sure I have a full stack of anti-zombie potions next time. I could still see the overlord's base far off in the distance. It was far enough away that it would probably take me a while to reach it, and then I'd have to deal with that huge chasm. I had a plan for that, though, but first, I need to return to my base. On day 71 to 74, I built my coolest vibranium invention yet, an aircraft with vibranium-powered levitation devices built into the wings. The only thing scarier than a Black Panther is a flying Black Panther. With my new aircraft, I'd be able to fly right over that giant chasm and drop in right on top of the Overlord. Before taking it out to the wasteland, though, I decided I should practice around my own base. All right, here we go. The first test flight of the Wakanda One aircraft. It worked. The aircraft lifted into the sky. The Overlord would never know what hit him. I practiced flying around, doing circles around my base, gradually getting further and further away as I got more comfortable. Whoa! I was still getting used to the controls, though, and almost crashed into a river. Luckily, I was able to pull up at the last moment, and before long, I had the controls down, and the aircraft was soaring like a bird. On day 75 to 78, I flew the vibranium aircraft to the Overlord's lair, passing right over the giant chasm. Wow, from up here, it looks like it doesn't even have a bottom. Good thing I didn't try to cross it on foot. Before I left my 
base, I had made sure to fill the cargo hold with plenty of anti-zombie potions. Time to save this land from tyranny. From high in the air, I could see a group of zombie apes in the lair's courtyard. I decided to drop a bunch of potions down at them from the airship, turning them back into normal gorillas. I kept writing down potions wherever I saw undead, and soon everything was back to normal. There was only one thing left to do. I landed the aircraft on the roof, which I thought should give me direct access to the Overlord's throne room. I stepped inside the throne room and saw that I was right. There was the Overlord waiting for me. You dare interfere with my plans? I will make you a zombie next, and then everyone and everything you know will become my zombies. He swung his weapon at me, but my suit's armor was strong enough to keep the damage low. I blasted him back with my force field, and then used my vibranium claws to land a couple good hits. You cannot defeat me. I am the Overlord. Watch me. I swung my hardest and knocked him down with my claws. Strangely, though, he just started laughing. He started to glow and rise into the air. You fool. All you've accomplished is releasing me from my zombie body, and soon I will be the mightiest being in the world. Uh-oh. I may have really messed up here. The Overlord, now a super powerful evil spirit, vanished. It looks like I had just released an even greater bad guy. On day 79 to 84, I used my aircraft to return to the River Spirit. I wanted to see if I could get any answers on how to defeat the Overlord's new spirit form. Well, the good news is he can't go back into his body now that he's a spirit. What's the bad news? The bad news is only false spirits can fight other spirits, and I'm not strong enough alone. Perhaps I could... No. No, it's impossible. What? What's your idea? Well, there is one thing that might work. I'm able to impart some of my river powers on others, but it's far too dangerous. You're not nearly strong enough to survive it. But if I was able to handle you giving me some of your river powers, could that turn the tide? Maybe, but you'll need to become much stronger both in body and mind if you want to withstand my powers. I had to stop the Overlord, and this seemed like the only way. So there was only one thing for me to do. Get stronger. It was time to start training. On days 85 to 89, I returned to my base and built some new areas where I could start training my body and mind. For physical strength, I built a dojo near the panther spirit's tree, complete with dummies that I could practice my attacks on. I had an even better idea for how to make my mind stronger, but to make it a reality first, I had to finish my statue. I completed my statue and stood back to look at it. I thought it looked great and felt mentally stronger just from gazing at the powerful panther emerging from the mountain, but it still needed one more thing. I decided to build a meditation spot right under its mouth, somewhere that I could focus and strengthen my mind. After training both in body and mind, I returned to the river spirit, but he quickly sent me away, telling me I wasn't nearly strong enough yet. I returned to my base again to train, and this time, the panther spirit himself appeared in my dojo. He told me that he trained with me so I could get better at fighting even quicker. I had an idea for how to improve my meditation training, too. I went back to the statue and made it so that the water would pour out of its mouth, creating a waterfall. I then built an area right where the water hit the ground, where I could sit in the rushing water and meditate, learning how to focus, even with powerful forces raging all around me. As I sat in the rushing water, thinking about my fighting training, I suddenly felt myself start to change. I grew in size and gained more hearts. Surely now I must be strong enough to handle the river spirit's power. I returned to the river and met with the spirit again. This time, there was no doubt. You're ready now. I will give you my powers. The river spirit combined with mine, and I felt his power within me. I felt stronger, like my attacks would do more damage since they were infused with water power. And I now had the ability to create water anywhere too. Look out, evil spirit. A hero is on his way to take you down. On days 90 to 94, I returned to my base to get my aircraft when a wasteland villager suddenly appeared. He told me that the evil spirit had sent an army of zombie piglins to invade their village, and they needed help. I hopped into my aircraft and flew to the village as fast as I could. When I got there, I saw that the villager was right. There was zombie piglins everywhere. The village was on fire, and villagers were trying to escape. The vibranium golem was fighting off as many piglins as he could, but there were simply too many for him to handle alone. I fought what seemed like a hundred little oinkers, using my new water ability to blast them. Eventually, we beat the last one, but the village had been almost completely destroyed. Villagers who had escaped were badly shaken and afraid. My base was big enough now that I was able to invite all the surviving villagers to stay there permanently. All of the villagers agreed to come, even the vibranium golem. On days 95 to 97, I took the villagers down to my train tunnel and built even more minecarts for them to start going to my base. I flew my aircraft back to the base so I could get it ready for them. I built enough houses for everyone in the same style as their village, and even built farms that looked exactly like their old home. The vibranium golem seemed happy too. He agreed to keep patrolling the new area and defend the villagers if any threats appeared. Just as I was finishing up the last house, I heard the voice of the panther spirit calling to me. I went back to his ancient tree once again. The evil spirit is waiting for you at the end of the river. It knows you teamed up with the river and thinks if it can destroy the river, it can destroy you too. Don't worry, I've got this. 
this. Together, the river and I are invincible. Go to the river delta, where the river meets the sea, and there you shall find the evil spirit. But before I left, he told me that there was one more thing he could do to help me. The panther spirit leapt towards me and absorbed into my body. I felt myself start to change, and I suddenly grew into a huge, super-powered black panther. I had a ton of hearts and felt more powerful than ever. Now, filled with the power of both the river and the panther, I embarked on what I hoped would be the quest that saved this land for good. On day 98, I was making my way down river towards the ocean when I saw the shaman appear in front of me in ghostly form. Hello there. Shaman, you're a spirit now too. Yes, before that ray of evil could kill me, I used my magic to become a spirit. I've been watching your progress and you've been doing an amazing job. I think you could use some help though. I'll take any help I can get. What I could really use now is some moral support. I can definitely give you that, but it would be even more powerful if everyone watching the video did too, by giving a like and subscribing. The more likes and sub you have, the stronger you'll be when you face the evil spirit. Wow, thanks shaman. I hope everyone likes and subscribes so that I'll be really powerful. And if you like the video, make sure to type Zozo, Z-O-Z-O, -Z -O, in the search bar to see my other adventures. There's a whole bunch of them. I will do that. Well, I didn't think you had YouTube, but okay, cool. On day 99, I made it to the river delta. A vast ocean stretched out into the horizon before me. Come out, evil spirit. It's me, and I've got the river spirit to help me. I used my spirit powers to walk on the water, and soon I was standing in the middle of this great sea. A dark shadow rose up from below, breaking through the surface of the water. It was the evil spirit. Ha 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 ha. You're too late. I will soon eat the river and become even stronger. Then I turn anything that drinks from the river into one of my undead servants. We will never let this happen. I used my water powers to hit the evil spirit. Then I ran in and started clawing him. Oh, oh, that does it. The evil spirit called down his beam of destruction, the same one he used on the shaman, but I was ready this time. There was no way he could win. Not after everything I went through. Not after I came this far. As we battled, I suddenly saw other beams of energy. I looked to my sides and saw the panther, the river, and the shaman spirit standing next to me, adding their energy into mine. My combined spirit beam grew bigger and stronger, and in moments, the evil spirit's power had run out, and he was blasted by the beam. Impossible. No! I rushed in, and with one final blow from my spirit claws, I put an end to his reign of evil for good. On day 100, I returned to the base and built myself a royal chamber suitable for a Wakandan king. The land may have been saved this time, but somebody would need to remain and be its protector. And from now on, that would be me. On day one, I spawned in as Spidey from Spidey and his amazing friends. I was surrounded by friendly spiders who were bigger than me. Wow, I'm really small. I must be a baby version of Spidey. But where are my friends? None of the spiders got a chance to tell me because the green goblin jumped out from behind a bush. There you are. Thought you could hide from me with all these spiders. Well, you were wrong, Spidey. Tag, you're it. Ha ha ha. He threw a pumpkin bomb, and I jumped out of the way just in time. But the other spiders were caught in the explosion. Oh, no. I was the only one who made it out okay. You're rotten, Green Goblin. Rotten to the core. What are you doing here? You're asking the wrong questions, Spidey. You're asking why I'm here, but you should be asking, why isn't Spin here? Right, Spin, Miles Morales, my friend. Why isn't he here? What did you do with him? That's for me to know, and you to find out. If you want to get him back, y'all need to come and find me and beat me in a fight. If you can't find my hideout in 100 days, I'll make sure you never see your little buddy again. He threw another pumpkin bomb and disappeared, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Oh no, that evil villain kidnapped Spin, and I only have 100 days to get him back. If I'm going to fight the Green Goblin and win, I need to get a whole lot stronger first. On day two, I decided to get out of the plains and into a new location. With all of the spiders gone, I was completely on my own. And there's nothing for me to climb or swing from out here. I need some tall buildings or some trees. So I headed into the forest. I already had 10 hearts. I sure hope I don't run into any trouble out here. I must have jinxed myself because a group of gremlins came out from behind a bunch of trees and started closing in around me. Uh -oh. Hey, why are you bothering me? I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, they didn't have to. We're here on orders from the Green Goblin. He wanted us to deliver something to you in person. A beatdown. Uh-oh, I'm not strong enough to take on all of these enemies at once. Let's get them, boys. The gremlins were getting closer, and I couldn't see anywhere to run. Was this it? Was I already going to lose on my second day? Hey, pick on someone your own size. I looked towards the voice, and I saw a rabbit skiing towards the gremlins. He skied right into them, breaking through the circle, and I was able to run away before they could get to me. When I finally stopped running, I noticed the rabbit was right behind me. Thanks for the help. No problem. I can't stand bullies. 
My name is Harry. Hi, Harry. I'm Spidey, but you can call me Zozo. On day three, Harry the skiing rabbit took me back to his home with him in the underground rabbit burrow. It was really nice of him, especially since I didn't have a base of my own yet. Now I have a safe place to rest for a little while where the green goblin wouldn't bother me. Thanks, Harry. This is so nice. No problem, Zozo. Hey, there's someone I want you to meet. He knows a lot about the green goblin, and I think he can help you out. He took me to the burrow of a Giza rabbit. Hello. I understand you're going up against the green goblin. A nasty fellow. Don't I know it. Well, forgive me for saying so, but you won't get far like that. You need some tools, some weapons, and you need to get a whole lot stronger. I know, but where should I start? The forest to the north has lots of wood. Go gather some so you can start making tools. You'll need to be well equipped with the strongest tools you can find, as well as an open heart and an adventurous spirit. It takes a hero to defeat a villain, and if you really try, you can become the hero that takes down the Green Goblin once and for all. That sounded like a whole lot of work, but as I thought about all the spiders the Green Goblin hurt and thought about Spin being held prisoner somewhere, I knew it was worth it. I guess I'd better get right to it then. First things first, I need to go gather that wood. You'd better go with him, Harry. We all need a friend in tough times, and Zozo has quite the journey ahead of him. Okay, let's go, Zozo! On days four and five, Harry and I went out into the northern forest to start gathering wood. There was no time to waste, so I started punching as many trees as I could. After I gathered enough wood, I built a crafting bench and crafted a set of wooden tools. Hooray! Now I can start gathering stone. You're doing awesome so far. Thanks, but I think this is the easy part. It'll only get harder from here. I'll be here to help every step of the way. Every hero needs a sidekick, right? That's true, but enough talking for now. I've got to get enough stone to upgrade my tools. I got to work, and once I had enough stone, I upgraded all of my tools from wooden ones to stone ones. Ready to help me build a base? We need a secret hideout if I'm going to be a real superhero. Yeah! We started building the base and made sure to add a room for me and another room for Harry so we both had somewhere to sleep. While we were building, a tarantula hawk flew up and started attacking me. What's the big idea? I couldn't let it get me, not when I was finally making progress. And I definitely wouldn't let it hurt Harry. The fight wasn't easy, but I won. And afterward, I felt myself getting stronger. Hey, I gained a heart. You're one step closer to being a superhero. Yeah. On day six through eight, I explored more of the forest. I wanted to see what other resources I could use to build my base, or if there was any useful item someone might have dropped. As I was getting ready to pick some apples from a tree, I heard someone yelling. Help, somebody, help. Sounds like someone needs a hero. I ran toward the sound of the voice, and I saw a raccoon being attacked by a pack of wolves. Don't worry, I'll help you. I'm your friendly neighborhood Zozo. As soon as the wolves saw me coming, they left the raccoon alone and ran at me. They snapped their jaws, trying to bite me and scratch me with their claws. But I dodged their attacks, and I hit them back with my stone sword. Ha, you're no match for me. I'm getting pretty good at this fighting to defend the innocent thing. After a while, I tired them out, and the wolves ran off and left me and the raccoon alone. Thank you so much. You saved my life. No problem. I'm Zozo. My name is May. I'm sorry to bother you, but you're such a strong fighter. Would you help me with something else? Helping is what I do. I'm so glad. Then please, come with me to the swamp. There's a nasty bad guy there I need help with. Lead the way. On days 9 and 10, May led me to the swamp to help deal with her problem. So, what's the deal with this swamp? I was staying here when this big, mean ogre came in and started stomping around and telling me to get out. He broke my house apart and told me that this was his swamp now and I needed to get out. But all of my things are still here and I don't want to just abandon them. Oh jeez, that does sound like a lot of trouble. I'll do whatever I can to help. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I found you. What are you doing in my swamp? The ogre jumped out, roaring and running right at us. He was much bigger than me, but I couldn't back down. I drew my sword and got ready to fight him. This isn't your swamp. You can't just kick people out. I can do whatever I want. I'm the biggest, baddest ogre in the swamp, which means it all belongs to me. You can't take things from people just because you're bigger and stronger. Who's gonna stop me? 
Me! I ran at him with my sword, but he grabbed me and lifted me into the air. Then he threw me. I landed hard and got the wind knocked out of me. Uh-oh, he might be too strong. He was getting ready to grab me again, and I swiped at him with my sword. He knocked the sword out of my hand, and it went flying. I had to run and grab it, and I knew if I tried to fight this ogre right now, I would lose. Let's get out of here, May. We'll go back to my base, and when I'm strong enough, I'll come back. I promise. Okay, thank you for trying. I didn't want to run away, but I can't save the day if I let myself get beaten by an ogre. So even though it wasn't fun to leave the fight, it was better that May and I were safe. On days 11 and 12, I brought May back to my base. I built her a room of her own with a chest and a crafting bench. Thank you so much, both of you. Of course, stay as long as you like. We're happy to have you. I was meaning to ask, do you know anything about the green goblin? That monster? I sure do. He kidnapped a friend of mine, and I'm trying to learn more about him. I'm pretty sure he lives underground somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but I've heard a lot of rumors about his underground cave hideout. If you can find out where he is, and you're strong enough to fight him, you might be able to use the element of surprise to help you defeat him. Underground, huh? That's really helpful. Thank you, May. Of course. The Green Goblin is terrible, and I'd be happy to see someone finally take him down. After I talked with May, I decided to add some food sources to my base. I know, I think I saw some chickens in the woods. Yes. So I built a fence to contain the chickens, then I went out looking for them. There you are. Come with me, chickens. I'll show you your new home. I herded the chickens back to the base and got them all set up in the fenced area. Then I cut down some grass and planted some weed at the base. Now we'll have plenty of food, and I learned more about the Green Goblin. What a successful day. On days 13 to 15, I decided to find some ways to get stronger, so I turned to Harry for advice. I think the best way to get stronger is to get some more experience. Explore new areas, go on some quests, fight more enemies. You can't learn if you don't put yourself out there, and upgrading your tools probably won't hurt either. That's a great idea, thank you. If I was going to upgrade my tools, I needed to get mining. I mined some coal and some iron too. I raced back to my base to make a furnace. Then I smelted the iron and used it to craft all iron tools. Great, now time to explore. Where can I go? I should go somewhere really different from anywhere I've been so far. I know, I'll go to the ice spikes. So I gathered all of my new tools and headed off to the ice spikes. Brr, it's getting cold. I'm not used to this weather. Maybe I should have brought some more supplies with me. Maybe you should have, but you didn't because you're weak and you'll never beat the green goblin. Who said that? I looked up and saw a green golem standing on top of a tall ice spike. I did. The boss sent me to check on your progress, and he's gonna laugh so hard when he hears about all this. But first, I think I'll teach you a lesson about trying to be a hero when you're really just a zero. Then he jumped down from the ice spike and landed right in front of me. But I was ready for him, and I had my brand new iron sword ready to go. Not so fast. He ran at me, and I swung my sword. He tried to hit me, but I dodged and attacked again. It was a pretty tough fight, but I managed to win in the end. After I defeated him, I noticed he dropped something. Cool, an explosive bottle. I can use this to fight the green goblin. Yes. I was so excited to show my friends what I found that I ran all the way back to my base. Harry was waiting for me. You should build an armory to keep your weapons. Great idea. So I built an armory, and after I did, I felt myself getting stronger. Whoa, I gained two hearts. On days 16 to 19, I decided to follow Harry's advice and keep exploring to get more experience. Maybe I'll find something else that will help me beat the Green Goblin or make a new friend. As I was looking around, I found an abandoned house. Anyone here? No one answered, so I let myself inside to have a look around. It was totally empty, except for a chest. I opened the chest and found an old book. I guess I'll read it. Superheroes should always take the time to read every now and again. As I read the book, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Whoa, so the Green Goblin is really Norman Osborn, the scientist. That's why he's so good at making those pumpkin bombs. I can't believe it. But it's in a book, so it must be true. 
Maybe this information will help me later. I grabbed the book to take with me and left the house to head back to my base. As I did, I saw the gremlins from before. Not you guys again. You better believe it, Spidey. The gremlins rushed at me and I fought them off with my sword. When they realized they were outmatched, they started to run away. This ain't the last you'll see of us. Oh, the green goblin. Tell your boss I'm getting stronger every day and I'm coming to get my friend. I couldn't believe it. I beat the gremlins on my own this time. Wow. I was really starting to feel like a superhero who could defeat the villain and save the day. I wasn't quite ready yet, but I had already come so far. On days 20 to 22, I looked for some more bad guys to fight in the forest around my base. I wanted to get stronger and keep my friends safe at the same time. A mutant spider pig attacked May while she was looking for food, and I rushed in to save the day. Get away from her! I swung my sword and defeated the mutant spider pig easily. I was so much stronger than I was on my first day. I think I'm finally ready to take on the ogre and get your stuff back. Are you sure? He's so scary. I am. I just need to make some armor first. I gathered some more iron and crafted myself some shiny new iron armor. With this on, he won't be able to hurt me. I made my journey back to the swamp where the mean old ogre was waiting for me. Back for more, are ya? I'll be happy to beat you again if you didn't learn your lesson the first time. He grabbed me just like he did before, but when he threw me, my armor protected me from getting hurt. Nice try, but I'm ready for you this time. He was so surprised that he didn't have time to dodge my attack. I got him with my sword, then I hit him again. This time, he was the one who got knocked over. Oh, fine, thank what you came for. Just leave before the Green Goblin finds out you're here. He's scared of how strong you're getting, and he's not afraid to cheat and have someone else take you out before you find his hideout. Whoa, so he's actually getting nervous. Don't get too confident. You're still nowhere near tough enough to beat him. Just go. So I grabbed a chest full of May's things, and I headed back to my base. On days 23 to 26, I returned to my base and went to find May. Here you go, I got this back for you. Oh, thank you so much. It has everything I own inside. I was so scared that I lost it all after that ogre destroyed my house. Can I stay here for a little while though, before I find a new place to live? Stay as long as you like. Have you ever thought about building a guard tower to keep the base safe in case the green goblin sends any goons this way? That's a great idea. I got to work building a guard tower, and when I was finished, I felt much safer. But I needed some ranged weapons to go with the guard tower, so I gathered flint, feathers, and string, and crafted a bow and arrows. Then May came over to talk to me, and she was holding something. I found this in my chest of items, and I wanted to give it to you. My way of saying thanks for all of your help. What is it? A newspaper. It's enchanted. I think it might be useful for you. Whoa, thank you so much. With my enchanted newspaper, my new guard tower, and my bow and arrow, I was feeling more prepared than ever. On days 27 to 31, I decided to get back to exploring and looking for new ways to get stronger. I hiked out to the Badlands to see what I could find. While I was exploring, I saw some tarantula stuck in a hole. I'll get you guys out of there, just hold on. I helped them all climb out, and then I sent them back to my base so they would have a safe place to stay for a while. Spiders have to stick together. After I helped the tarantulas, I looked around the Badlands some more. There weren't any enemies to fight, but there was a lot of terracotta. This looks cool. I'll gather some for my base. I got as much terracotta as I could take with me and went back to my base to decorate with it. I worked hard on creating a beautiful terracotta floor in my room, and when it was finished, I kicked back and ate a snack. But I couldn't rest for very long. Zozo, I need your help. I sprung into action. What's wrong? There's trouble in the rabbit burrow. We have to go help them. Let's go. On days 32 to 35, Harry and I went back to the underground rabbit burrow to check things out and help save the rabbits there. When we got there, we saw a bunch of the Green Goblin's gremlins attacking and throwing pumpkin bombs. They were destroying everything. Not so fast. Don't worry, rabbits. Your friendly neighborhood Spidey Zozo is here to help. What are you gonna do about it? I drew my sword. Remember this? They looked pretty nervous, and I started slashing left and right, taking down as many gremlins as I could. I thought I'd beaten all of them, but there was one more hiding behind a nearby wall. Before I could get to him, he pulled out another pumpkin bomb and threw it right at the geezer rabbit who helped me before. No! But it was too late. The gremlin blew him up. 
You'll pay for this! I took down the last gremlin, fast, but I didn't feel any better. I was so upset about the Giza rabbit. It's not your fault. It's the Green Goblin. He did this. You're right, Harry. And we're gonna make sure he never hurts anyone else again. On days 36 to 39, I decided to head to the beach and see if I could find anything useful there. I needed all the strength and weapons I could get if I was going to beat the Green Goblin before he could strike again. Are there any heroes out here? Please, I need help. A hero? That's me. Who said that? I can help. Me. I looked over and I saw a walrus sitting on the sand. What's wrong? Out there in the water is my favorite rock to sit on when I want to catch a few rays. But when I try to sit there now, there's a mean octopus who keeps attacking me and trying to pull me into the water. That's not very nice. You wait here, friend. I'll go teach that octopus some manners. Be careful. He's very smart. It's okay. I'm pretty smart, too. I swam out to the walrus's favorite rock and waited for the octopus to try and mess with me. Wow, what a nice rock. I sure hope no one tries to pull me into the water. But I did hope someone would try, and I was ready. I didn't think I could fight in the water while trying to swim at the same time, so I would have to be able to fight from a distance. Good thing I crafted a ranged weapon. I grabbed my bow and arrow and waited. Sure enough, that pesky octopus showed up and tried to grab me. Before he could, I fired my arrow at him. A direct hit! He tried to grab me again, so I fired a few more arrows for good measure until I was sure I had won. Then I swam back to the shore to give the walrus the good news. Thank you so much. Are you the hero that's trying to take on the green goblin? I sure am. Well, here's some advice. I heard he's strong, but not very fast. That's why he throws those pumpkin bombs. If you can avoid his bombs, it'll be easier to get him. Thanks so much, I'll remember that. On days 40 to 43, I returned home to my base. It was looking a little bit dull, so I decided to spruce up the place with some torches for extra light and to keep any zombies away. As I was finishing up, Harry came to see me. Say, this looks great. Thanks. Do you think we could make room for some more guests to stay here? I met some squirrels in the woods who said the Green Goblin blew up the tree they were living in. I thought maybe we could help them out. Sure, the more the merrier. Hey, let's build them a tree house, then they'll feel right at home. Harry and I got to work, and before long, we built a great tree house for the squirrels to live in. Then Harry went to get the squirrels and show them their new home. It felt good to help more people in need. It was a nice reminder that being a hero isn't just about beating bad guys, it's about helping those who need it. The tarantulas came to see me after I finished the treehouse, and then they told me that they heard a rumor about some baby spiders that were being held prisoner in a nearby cave. Well, I couldn't let that happen. I promised them I would go over there and rescue those baby spiders. On days 44 to 49, I traveled to the cave the tarantulas told me about to save those poor kidnapped baby spiders. When I got there, I couldn't see any baby spiders anywhere. I looked all over the place, but there weren't any spiders in that cave. Huh, that's weird. You fell for my trap, Spidey. Ha 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 ha. The green goblin jumped out from behind a rock. There aren't any baby spiders here. It was a lie. But I knew that would get you to come here. Poor little hero with no one to save. Too bad, so sad. You're scum, green goblin. Oh, you wound me! You're running out of time, Spidey! Too bad you won't be able to save your buddy Spin before I blow him up! And when I'm done, I'll go to your base in the forest and blow that up too! That's right, I know where you've been hiding! Why are you doing this? Because I can! Wish I could stay and chat, but I've gotta run! I'll leave you with some company though! Oh, Minion! A huge earth elemental came into the cave! Bye, Spidey! The green goblin ran away and disappeared, leaving me alone with the earth elemental. He looked pretty tough. Uh-oh! I had no choice. If I wanted to get out of there and get back to my base, I was gonna have to fight him. On days 50 to 53, I did my best to fight the earth elemental. He was a lot bigger than me, but I wasn't about to back down or let myself get scared. I stared him down and got ready. The earth elemental ran at me and knocked me back into the cave wall. But luckily, I had my armor on and it didn't take too much damage. I jumped back onto my feet and ran at the earth elemental with my sword. I got a few good hits in before he knocked me back again. 
Next, I climbed up onto a rock and shot an arrow at him. It hit, and while he was recovering, I jumped back down and rushed up to deliver a finishing blow. He went down, and I was the winner! Woohoo! I did it! I really am turning into a superhero! Wait, what's this? There was a book on the ground! I picked it up and started to read. The Notes of Norman Osborn. I hate spiders so much. One day I'll find a way to get rid of every spider in the world, and then I can finally be happy once they're gone. I'm so glad I found this underground cavern to build my laboratory and basin. It's the perfect place to do my work. So the Green Goblin hates spiders. That's why he's after me and why he took spin. That's despicable. So his lair is in an underground cavern. There's a drawing of a map here showing where it is. I'm one step closer to defeating him once and for all. On days 54 to 57, I returned to the forest and started making my way back to the base. I've got to tell my friends what I've learned. But as I was walking, I heard someone crying for help. I followed the sound and there were some baby spiders in a cage. Oh no, there really are some baby spiders in trouble. Hold on little guys, I'll save you. I ran to let them out of the cage, but I couldn't find a key. Then a phantom swooped down on me. I was ready though, and I slashed at it with my sword until it went down. I saw that the phantom dropped the key, and also a blast protection enchantment. Awesome, this'll help keep me safe from the pumpkin bombs. I took the key and let the baby spiders out of the cage. Be free. Then I went back to my base to let the tarantulas know that I managed to help out the baby spiders. Then I told them all about what I found out about the green goblin and his lair. I showed them the map and they recognized where the caverns were. They promised to help me find the caverns when I was ready to finally have my showdown against the villain. On days 58 to 62, I decided to plant some more crops so that we could have more food at the base. I went into the forest and gathered melons, then planted a bunch of melon seeds next to my wheat. Next, I decided it was finally time to upgrade my gear again. I went back down into the mine where I found my iron and started looking for some diamonds. It took a while and a lot of hard work, but finally I found some. Sweet! Time to craft some diamond gear! I was able to use the new materials to craft a diamond sword. After that was done, I expanded the base and added some more rooms, including a bedroom for Spin. After all, he's gonna need somewhere to stay when I finally rescue him. On day 63 to 66, the squirrels came up to talk to me. They told me that I might be able to find some useful materials at the stone shores. So naturally, I decided to head out there and see what I could find. When I arrived there, I couldn't see much of anything that would help me beat the Green Goblin. I was starting to feel discouraged. Then, I saw a stone monster coming toward me. Oh no, I guess I have to fight this guy now. But to my surprise, he didn't want to fight. He just wanted my help getting rid of a mean mutant creeper that took over the cove and killed his uncle, Ben. I'm so sorry that happened. Of course I'll help. I asked him to show me where he last saw the mutant creeper and he pointed me in the right direction. A hero's work is never done. I guess with great power comes great responsibility, but I'm ready for it anyway. On day 67 to 70, I traveled to the part of the cove that the mutant creeper had taken over. I could get more fighting experience and help someone at the same time. Just another day of being a superhero. Come on out, you mean mutant creeper. I'm here to dispense some justice. As soon as it heard me, the mutant creeper came out of hiding and rushed at me to attack. It came at me and started hitting me, but I countered with my sword and my armor protected me from the damage. I knew I had to defeat it before it had a chance to charge up or explode. So I had to work fast, faster than I ever had before in a fight. It was hard, but I managed to take down the mutant creeper before it could blow up. Whew, that was a close one. Then I went back to the stone monster. That mutant creeper won't be bothering you ever again. All in a day's work for an up and coming superhero. On day 71 to 74, I traveled to the desert to gather some sandstone. As I was walking, I noticed an unusual rock formation. It spelled out, if you're enjoying this adventure, find more Zozo videos by searching for Zio Zio. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Wow, nature really is amazing. Now back to what I was doing. Having a nice little desert stroll, eh, Spidey? The green goblin suddenly appeared. I wasn't expecting to fight you so soon, but I guess there's no time like the present. Watching you lose will be a gift. 
I drew my sword and got ready to fight. The green goblin tossed a pumpkin bomb at me, and I had to dodge, but I got caught in the blast. Ouch! I lost a few hearts. I hate to admit it, but I'm still not strong enough. I need to get out of here. So that I would live to fight another day, I ran away as fast as I could before he could attack again. That was a close one! On day 75 to 78, I ran back to my base with some of the stone I managed to gather before the green goblin attacked me. I built a stone wall around the whole base. Awesome, this is looking great! At least something good came out of my trip to the desert. When I finished building the wall, Harry the rabbit came up to me. Zozo, I found something and I wanted to give it to you as a present. Thanks for everything you've done for me. You're a great friend and a real hero. Here you go, it's a cobweb. Whoa, thanks! I took the cobweb and it reminded me of my spidey strength and everything I had accomplished so far. I felt myself growing bigger and I gained three more hearts. On day 79 to 84, I decided to try out my new strength and bigger size by fighting some bad guys. If I wanted to push myself, a good way to do that would be to fight in the cold. So I went out to the snowy tundra to look for some mobs I could fight to keep everyone a little bit safer. I didn't have to look for very long before I found some gremlins bullying a snowy goat. Hey, stop that! Who's gonna stop us? Me! Oh yeah, we're so scared! They didn't know how much stronger I was, so they weren't ready for how much better I was at fighting. It didn't take long before I beat them. I asked the snowy goat if he wanted to come back to my base and stay there for a while. No thanks, I'm good. Could you walk me home though? It's just near here. Sure. So I walked with the snowy goat until he reached his house. You seem like a nice kid. Here, take this. Maybe it'll be of some use to you. Then he gave me a vine lasso. This is great, thanks. Now I can attack the green goblin from a distance. Saving people is its own reward, but it's also pretty nice to get a gift every now and then. On days 85 to 89, I went back to my base. When I got there, I saw there were gremlins attacking. Let's burn this place down before Spidey gets back. Too late, I'm already here. Uh-oh. The gremlins ran away, but I chased after them. Hey, I've gotten faster. Before too long, I had almost caught up to them, but I was stopped by the Ragnarok. Please help, those nasty gremlins stole my falconry hood. I need it for my favorite eagle. Don't worry, I'll get it back for you. Using my newly increased speed, I chased after the gremlins and caught up to them. Once I did, I beat them quickly and grabbed the falconry hood to take back to the Ragnarok. Here you go. Thank you so much. It's what I do. On days 90 to 94, I followed the gremlin footprints into the deep forest. This must be where they were hiding out before they attacked my base. Oh look, it's Spidey. Come to lose another fight. There was a gremlin chef waiting for me. Do I know you? No, oh, but you should. I'm the Green Goblin's top henchman. The guy who handles all of his biggest problems. And you're a pretty big problem. A bug that needs to be squashed. He looked pretty tough, but I wasn't about to back down from this fight. I had to prove that I could take on the Green Goblin, so I needed to beat his right-hand man first. Let's do this. On days 95 to 97, I fought as hard as I could against the gremlin chef. At first, it was not going very well. He was dodging all of my attacks, one after another. Man, this guy's tough. Might as well give up now, Spidey. You'll never beat me, and you'll never beat the Green Goblin. But I thought about Spin and everyone else who the Green Goblin was putting in danger, and I knew I couldn't give up. I grabbed the vine lasso and threw it at the gremlin chef. It caught him. I was able to get him still enough to land a hit, and then the fight started to turn around. Finally, I knocked him down for good. As I was getting ready to leave, I noticed that he dropped something on the ground. Cave centipede leggings. I decided to put them on and see what they would do. I went back to my base and realized I could now climb up walls. This is perfect. I'll be able to use this to avoid the green goblin's pumpkin bombs and be faster than him. This is just what I needed. On day 98, I was back at my base and practicing climbing walls with my new cave centipede leggings. When I stopped to take a break, Harry came up to talk to me. I just wanted to say, you've turned into an amazing hero, Zozo. I'm so glad I met you. If anyone can beat the Green Goblin, it's you. Thank you. Next, May came up to see me. She brought me some diamond armor. I spent the last few days making this for you. I hope you can use it when you take on the Green Goblin.
This is amazing, thank you so much. Then the squirrels and the tarantulas thanked me for everything I had done for them. The tarantulas said that even though I wasn't a real spider, they considered me one of their own anyway. It really meant a lot to me. I was feeling braver and stronger than ever, with all of my friends by my side. On day 99, I asked the tarantulas to give me directions to the green goblin's underground lair. They told me where to go, and I headed out. It was now or never. As I was making my way toward the caverns, a cockroach scuttled past me. You can do it! Thanks, cockroach. I wasn't sure how she knew what I was doing, but I appreciated the encouragement anyway. Finally, I reached the green goblin's cavern lair, but the outside was crawling with green golems standing guard. Oh no, how am I gonna get inside? I'll help you. It was the walrus I saved from the octopus. I'll take care of these guys. You get inside and get to the green goblin. On day 100, it was finally time for me to face off against the biggest, baddest villain around, the Green Goblin. I was pretty scared, but I also knew how far I'd come and how many people believed in me. So you made it. Such a shame you came all this way just to die. He threw a pumpkin bomb at me, but I dodged it and climbed up a nearby wall. I learned some new tricks, Goblin. They won't be enough to beat me. We'll see about that. From my place on the wall, I shot an arrow at him. He dodged it. But I jumped down and swung at him with my sword, and it hit him. Then I ran back up the wall and got ready to attack from a distance again. I wouldn't shoot any more arrows at me if I were you. Look what I have. And he had Spin there with him, tied up. I had to get Spin out of the way so he wouldn't get hurt when I attacked the Green Goblin. I thought quickly and used my vine lasso to pull Spin toward me and out of the way just as the Green Goblin threw another pumpkin bomb. Then I remembered, I had the explosive bottle. I could beat the Green Goblin at his own game. Let's get out of here, Spin. Running away, are you? Nope, just getting far enough to do this. I threw the explosive bottle at the Green Goblin. Then I got out of there as fast as I could. Boom, the cavern exploded, and I knew the Green Goblin was gone once and for all. I finally had my friend back and the land was saved. All thanks to your friendly neighborhood Zozo. On day one, I spawned in as a Lego man. Looks like I'm a baby Lego man. Figures. Wait, it looks like the whole Minecraft world is made out of Lego. That's amazing. I looked around the desert I'd spawned into and saw other Lego people walking around. All villagers by the looks of it. I've never seen anything like this. What's going on here? Allow me to explain, Lego Zozo. I turned and saw a more sinister Lego man with a scary looking helmet and a business suit. He didn't look friendly. Uh -oh. I'm Lord Business, soon to be the new manager of this Lego world. I'm gonna keep things clean, orderly, and most importantly, profitable. That doesn't sound so bad. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, to make profits, you need to cut costs. And I'm gonna cut costs by destroying all those who oppose me. Starting here! He swung his hammer, and suddenly the desert was filled with explosions, tearing into the ground and blowing up all the Lego villagers around me. Just like that, I was all alone. I'm not gonna let you get away with this, Lord Business. I will defeat you. Lord Business just laughed and stomped over towards me. I've got a tight business plan, Zozo. I'll have control of this entire world in 100 days. And unless you become a master builder, you'd have no hope of stopping me. And it's not like that's gonna happen. I wanted to fight back and defend myself, but I was just a baby and I didn't have any weapons. Oh. That's when a swarm of soul vultures appeared and started chasing me. All I could do was run. There's only one way out of this. I need to figure out what exactly a master builder is and become one in 100 days so I can defeat Lord Business and stop him from taking over the world. On day two, after running for hours and hours, I ended up leaving the desert and entering the savanna. I may not have any weapons yet, but at least I'm tough. Five Lego hearts? Even my health and hunger bar look like Lego pieces. Wow. And I'd need those Lego hearts because I still hadn't lost Lord Business's gang of nasty soul vultures. They were tough and fast, and I still didn't have any gear to fight them off with. Don't you guys have something better to do than hassle a baby Lego man? As the soul vultures got closer, I could feel my energy depleting. It was almost nightfall, and now I was really in trouble. Then, flaming arrows went flying through the sky, 
Someone was shooting at the soul vultures. The flames scared them and the flock retreated. Someone had saved my life. That's when I saw a Lego villager hiding behind some cover. Thanks for saving my life, man. No problem. Name's Bruce. I'm part of the resistance against Lord Business and his evil plans. Wait, there's a resistance? Please let me in on it. I want to help defeat Lord Business too. Then you better follow me. It's dangerous to be around here at nightfall. Before we go, do you perhaps have any food? My Lego belly is starting to rumble. No problem, little man. Here are some cooked mutton Lego bricks. On day three, Bruce and I went to a village in the middle of the savannah. The village provides cover for the resistance. All the key members are hiding out here. None of us want Lord Business to turn this world into his personal piggy bank. Bruce took me to a secret building in the middle of town where he wanted me to meet the resistance leader, an Egyptian illager named Osiris, sitting in a chair in his private library. Wow. Everyone was gathered around the table, so I sat behind it as well. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Osiris. I'm Zozo. Bruce told me you're the leader of the resistance against Lord Business. This is true. Bruce told me you wished to join us. That's also true. Lord Business attacked me when I first spawned, and he told me he's gonna take over the world in the next 100 days. I could only stop him if I became something called a master builder. Osiris seemed shocked. He stood up and came walking towards me. A master builder? He said those exact words? Master builder? Yeah, but I have no idea what it means. Do you know anything about master builders, Osiris? Legends tell of the master builders. They're Lego men who have mastered the sacred art of construction. Through training and special techniques, they can build anything. Some say they're so good at building, they don't even need to use weapons to fight. They can use building itself as a weapon. Wow. I jumped with excitement. Oh my gosh, that sounds incredible. How can I become one? It won't be easy, but it's possible. It will take training in the art of building, of course. But most importantly of all, you must be taught the secret techniques by the four master builders hidden across the world. And if we are to have any hope of stopping Lord Business, you'll need to do all of this in less than 100 days. I waved goodbye and exited the secret building. On days four to five, I began my first pieces of work and training. After all, I couldn't even think about seeking the other master builders until I'd completed some basic training. Tools! First, I gotta make myself some tools. So I went over to the nearby trees and started gathering up some wood. It wasn't easy to punch through the trees, but soon enough, I had enough wood to make a crafting bench. And then, my first set of wooden tools. Yes. These look pretty cool, but a master builder needs better than wooden tools. Using my wooden shovel and pickaxe, I started digging into the ground until I hit stone and collected enough blocks to build myself a full set of stone gear, including tools and a sword. Because I was now an official part of the resistance, Osiris said I was allowed to build my base on the edge of the village, so I started using my spare wood and stone blocks to build the foundations of my base. The first step was building rooms for myself and Bruce, the Lego villager who had saved my life in the desert. It's always nice to have a friend living with you. Bruce hurried towards me, looking frantic. Zozo, the building is gonna have to wait. I can see a bunch of zombies creeping towards us out of the savannah. We need to stop them. Luckily, I had my new stone sword, so I pulled it out and ran in, ready to kick some moldy zombie booty. You're messing with a future master builder here. You're gonna regret this. And they did, because it didn't take me long to defeat the zombies and return to my base, glowing with victory. That's when I started to change. I upgraded, getting bigger, and gaining two hearts. Seven hearts? This is awesome! On day six through eight, I was wandering through the savannah until I reached a forest. I was collecting more wood for my base when I saw a wooden villager being attacked by this big and ugly looking bug called a sectoid. But the wooden villager was fighting back, building walls between him and the attacking sectoid. I've never seen anyone fight like this before. Maybe he's... That's when the wooden villager noticed me. Are you gonna stand there all day, son? Or are you gonna give me a hand with this thing? Oh, right, sorry. I ran in with my stone sword and joined the fight. The sectoid was tough, but with me and the wooden villager working together, we had a chance. Every time the sectoid tried to attack me, the wooden villager quickly built a little wall between us. Soon enough, the sectoid was exhausted and confused, and I was able to defeat it with my stone sword. 
he dropped some string. I guess it makes sense, he did look a bit like a spider. All that was left was me and the wooden villager who wanted to know more about his special fighting skills. Thanks for the assist, kid. Who are you? I'm Zozo, and who are you? I'm Master Red. Wait, Master? As in Master Builder? Can you help me learn to be like you? Sure thing, kid. Your training starts now. You're gonna help me chase a soul eater out of a cave near here. Sounds like a plan, Master. Let's go. On days 9 to 10, Master Ren and I made our way through the forest until we found the cave he told me about. Before we go in, Master Ren, what's the first lesson? How can I fight like a master builder? The first technique is the one you saw me using in the woods, kid. When your opponent tries to attack you, you build a wall between you and them. Okay, I think I'm ready. Let's do this. I followed Master Ren into the cave where the Soul Eater was waiting. It was even bigger and scarier than I thought it'd be. And the second it saw us, it flew towards us. Now is the time, Zozo. Try out the technique I taught you. But with the Soul Eater charging towards me, I panicked. I couldn't help it. I tried to build the wall between us as quickly as I could, but the Soul Eater just flew over the tiny barricade and started attacking me. In one strike, I lost a bunch of hearts. Uh-oh, I need to get out of here. I ran out of the cave and Master Ren followed me. I felt so embarrassed to lose in front of him like that, but he didn't seem to mind. Perhaps I will need to train you more cautiously, young Zozo. How about you come stay at my base? You can train me more there. That sounds like a good idea to me. On days 11 to 12, I returned back to my base with Master Ren and started adding another floor to the base. This way, he can have his own room. I hope this is to your liking, Master Ren. Well, it's clear you have much to learn in the way of building. But thank you, Zozo. It'll do. While Master Ren was resting up, I decided to put my building skills to good use. I created a custom crafting room where I could perfect my crafting skills and store my creations. By the time I was done, I saw that Osiris had arrived at my base, and he had something to tell me. How's the training going, Zozo? It's, uh, going. What's up? I figured it was finally time for me to tell you about what's really going on and why Lord Business is doing everything he's doing. You see, creativity is a wonderful thing, and it's a skill that all master builders are required to develop. But the purest kind of creativity is the kind used to make people happy. The darkest kind is the one that Lord Business has fallen prey to. Creativity to satisfy greed. All he cares about is money, and everything that people create, he seeks to own, and he's willing to destroy anyone who gets in the way of his bottom line. After hearing this story, I went out into the forest and gathered more sticks and wooden blocks. I made a little fenced up area in the backyard of my base and herded some cows into it, as well as making a small wheat farm alongside it. If I'm gonna become a master builder, I need to be able to build everything. On days 13 to 15, I approached Ren, who was practicing in an archery range I had built for him on the other side of the base. Hey Ren, I was wondering, do you know other ways I can improve my building abilities? Hmm, well, I suppose there is this handy tool I usually use. It's called a builder's wand, and it lets you build much faster by extending connected block faces. Huh? What? You didn't think to mention this before in the cave? Well, I have been known to be a bit forgetful here and there. Here, have one. Ren tossed out the wand for me. Thanks. Well, hopefully you can remember anything about master builders since, you know, you are one of them. Osiris said something about there being four master builders out there, and I've only found you. Hmm, perhaps your best bet is searching the snowy tundra. I've heard tales of mysterious buildings popping up there. It could be the work of a master builder. Then I guess the snowy tundra is exactly where I'm heading. Word of advice, Zozo. Build yourself a bow first. You never know when it'll come in handy for you. Before setting off for the snowy tundra, I tested out the builder's wand, and sure enough, it makes building walls much easier. This tool is really useful. I also followed Ren's advice and made myself a bow, just in case. All I needed were some feathers, and luckily there were a few chickens around, so I could craft the arrows as well. Yes. Better to have a bow and not need it, right? I made my way across the map to the snowy tundra. Part of me hoped I'd find the next master builder waiting for me, but it turned out that the snowy tundra was huge. It'd take me forever to find someone here. But it didn't take long for a mutant snow golem to find me and start attacking. You must work for Lord Business. Jeez, is there anyone outside the village who doesn't work for that guy? 
I tried my best to use Master Ren's technique, building walls in front of the attacking snow golem, but he was still too fast for me, even with the builder's wand. In the end, I kept my distance and finished him off with the bow. I don't know if I'm ever going to be good enough to be a master builder at this rate. But the mutant snow golem did drop something, a builder's potion, which helps the speed of my mining and building. Just what the doctor ordered. I returned to my base and took the potion, practicing by digging a huge hole near my base and collecting a bunch of stone blocks. It was a good exercise because soon enough, I leveled up and gained two more hearts. Nine hearts? This is rad! On days 16 to 19, I continued exploring, hoping I might find another master builder hiding inside some ancient ruins. This place is so old and spooky, it seems just like the kind of place an old master would hang out. But I was half right. I didn't find a master builder here, but I did find an ancient sign that might lead me to one. It read, He who seeks to reach the peak of skill must climb to the peak itself. A master dwells where the air is thin. Hmm, thin air. Peaks? That sounds like a mountain. I know where I need to go now. But I couldn't celebrate too quickly. A group of Barracoa ancient people sent by Lord Business had cornered me. I needed to think fast. What would a master builder do? That's when I had an idea. Using all the stone I'd mined in the days before, I quickly ran around the group of Barracoa, building a wall around them that boxed them all in. It was quite tricky because they were surprisingly fast for their short stature. Eventually, I did succeed in boxing them in, though. Before any of them had a chance to escape, I fled the ancient ruins, safe to fight another day. Master Ren is going to be so proud of me. On days 20 through 22, I was making my way through the forest, gathering up materials to prepare for my journey into the mountain. These mountains are treacherous. I should really upgrade my gear before I go. While I was in the forest, some spiders attacked me. I was low on stone at the time, so I decided to defeat them with my stone sword instead of doing it the master builder way. Variety is the spice of life. Once the spiders were dealt with, I mined until I stumbled into a small cave system. I found some iron deposits. It took a while to mine all of it, but in no time I had enough to smelt and craft into a set of iron armor and tools. It made me feel so cool and powerful. Yes. Maybe it's time for me to pay my old enemy a visit. With my new tools and my new power, I went back to the cave where I had almost been defeated by the Soul Eater. But this time, it was going to happen the other way around. Come get me, Soul Eater. I'll give you something to chew on. I decided to go for a mix of standard and master builder tactics. As the Soul Eater flew towards me, I used my skill to quickly build a wall around the Soul Eater, trapping him in place. But there was no time to waste. I pulled out my new iron sword and one-shotted the Soul Eater right in the head. How do you like me now, you cave-dwelling meanie? Having fun, Zozo? I turned and saw Lord Business standing at the cave entrance and staring at me. Lord Business, what are you doing here? Watching your pathetic attempt to become a master builder. You really think you can make a difference? You're not special, Zozo. And believe me, when my factories are complete, we'll never need people like you to make anything ever again. And with that, he disappeared. Factories? That doesn't sound good. On days 23 to 26, I returned to my base, eager to tell Master Ren that I'd used my new skills to take down the Soul Eater. This is an amazing development, Zozo. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Master Ren. I couldn't have done it without your help. I have a reward for you. A special schematic for a new tool I've built. I think you'll find it quite useful. Master Ren gave me a book full of instructions, and I went into the crafting room to begin building. By the time I was done, I had a multi-tool. One tool that can be a pickaxe, a shovel, an axe, a sword, and a hoe. All in one. This is a perfect tool for a master builder. I then used my new iron multi-tool to clear the mess we did outside the base. I also used it to gather some more food. I then took some time to build a wall around my base. Now nobody with bad intentions could get in. On days 27 to 31, I decided to finally follow the instructions I saw in the ancient ruins. As I arrived at the ruins, I saw the Barracoa were gone, so I made my way up into the mountains. It was dark, cold, and difficult to climb, but it was worth it if it'd make me be a better builder. I couldn't see any mobs, thankfully, but I was so high up that if I fell, I probably would have been done for anyway. Then, without warning, an ice man landed on the ground next to me. Who goes there? What? Where did you come from? That doesn't matter. Why are you invading my domain, stranger? I'm Zozo, and I swear I didn't mean to intrude. 
I just came here to look for a master builder. Then you found him. I'm Master Frost, the master builder of the mountains. That's when I saw how Master Frost had gotten the jump on me. He'd immediately built a staircase behind me and used it to attack me from above. He really was a master builder. Want to come back to my base, Master Frost? I'd love to learn from you. I can even make you your own room. Sure, why not? It's been a while since I've taught a young whippersnapper in the tricks. While we made our way back to my base, we came across a rainbow tree. Wow. Frost built some stairs so I could reach the top, and I mined some unique material with my multi-tool. Super colorful rainbow grass blocks. I returned to my base afterwards and built a new room for Master Frost, even giving him a window made from rainbow glass blocks. It was almost done when Bruce approached me in a panic. Zozo! Lord Business has sent some minions to attack the village. We need your help immediately. On days 32 to 35, I rushed into the village with Bruce, ready to defend it from whatever attack Lord Business had unleashed on us. But I wasn't expecting to see a gang of ender creepers crawling all over the village. The whole village was completely overrun by creepers. They were chasing innocent villagers all around the village. Oh no, looks like Lord Business really took his evil up a notch. Knowing it was dangerous to take on the ender creepers up close, Bruce and I pulled out our bows and started shooting the ender creepers, trying to take them out before they exploded. We had to be extra careful, but with the help of Bruce, we managed to get a lot of them. A few unfortunately slipped through the net, with awful consequences. Bruce suddenly looked towards Osiris's secret base. Zozo, look! They're cornering Osiris! Bruce was right! Osiris was being cornered by an ender creeper, slowly creeping towards him. We heard him beg for mercy. No! No, please don't do this! Before we could get close enough to save the resistance beloved leader, we heard it! A Lego boom! The ender creeper exploded, setting off a chain reaction that blew up a bunch of the other houses. The whole village was in ruins! We rushed to check out Osiris' secret base, but all we saw was smoke rolling out. He was gone! Osiris! No! There was so much left unsaid between us! Come on, Zozo! We can mourn later! We need to stop these heavy creepers before they can do any more damage! It didn't take us long to defeat the rest of the Ender Creepers, but with Osiris gone, our morale had taken a serious hit! On days 36 to 39, I decided I needed to search further if I wanted to find the third and fourth master builder. That's why I traveled all the way to the Ice Spikes, a scary and desolate land even further away than the snowy tundra. Master builder! Is there a master builder anywhere? I soon came across a Viking villager named Olaf. He was camping in one of the Ice Spikes, eating a Lego apple. He looked exhausted. You okay there, buddy? Oh yes, just taking a breather. You wouldn't happen to be a master builder, would you? No, afraid not. I'm just a viking. But I can tell you where to find a master builder if you help me deal with a little problem I'm having. That sounds awesome. What do you need? There's a bad snowman around here I've been trying to destroy. But I'm having an off day. If you can take care of him for me, I'll give you the information you need. Deal. I wandered around the ice spikes until I found the bad snowman that Olaf had warned me about. Thankfully, I still had plenty of energy, so I pulled out my multi-tool sword and took him by surprise. Don't mess with this, Lego man. That's no joke. He even left a few carrots and snowballs in his chest. Maybe the Viking will want to play a snowball fight with me. I returned to the Viking and told him the good news. The bad snowman had been defeated. Finally, I thought I'd never get to leave this stinking place. Yeah, the snowman even left a few snowballs behind. Wanna play a snowball fight? Uh, no thanks. I'm too old and tired for such games. Oh, okay. So how about the Master Builder? Where can I find the next one? I heard there's one of them hiding out in the swamp, but he likes his privacy. No offense, but you should probably get better before you go see him. If you're not experienced enough, he'll think you're just wasting his time. On days 40 through 43, I returned to the base. Walking through the rubble the creepers left behind reminded me of the loss of our great Osiris leader. This is no time for sadness. I'm ready to practice and improve my building skills, so one day I can have my vengeance. I added some new furniture to the base, along with some bookcases that helped me study the craft of master building. Master Ren approached me midway through my renovations with a new request. Zozo, my student, Lord Business's latest creeper attack on the village has destroyed many homes and left many LEGO villagers homeless. You should do them a kindness and make room in your base for them to live in the meantime. Master Ren made a good point. 
I invited in the homeless LEGO villagers and started building another level to my base, complete with beds for them all to sleep in. Just as I finished, Master Frost came to me with an urgent message. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Zozo, but I've received some vital information. Some of my allies have followed up on the lead for one of Lord Business's factories. I need you to investigate and find out what's going on. It's also the perfect time for you to test out my attack from above technique. Of course, Master Frost, I won't let you down. On days 44 to 49, I followed Master Frost's instructions until I reached the factory. It was a spooky looking building, so harsh and out of place in this fun Lego world. I need to stop this madness as soon as possible before it ruins the whole world. I crept inside, trying to stay hidden. But while I may have gotten really good at building, I was kind of terrible at creeping because Lord Business noticed me immediately. Uh -oh. This is private property, Zozo. Did none of your masters ever teach you not to trespass? It's rude. It's also rude to be an evil overlord. What's your end game, Lord Business? What's the big plan here? Well, since you'll never leave this place alive, I guess I can tell you. You see this factory? I'm going to cover the whole world in thousands like it and fill it with builders like you. You'll all either work for me or be destroyed, endlessly building products that I can sell for a massive profit. All for me! You'll never get away with this! I won't let you! You don't have a choice. Remember the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules. Speaking of which, meet a friend of mine, the Gold Warrior. A Gold Warrior stepped out from the darkness, ready to fight. Get rid of him. I'm a little too busy to stick around and watch. Lord Business disappeared again, and the Gold Warrior charged at me. On days 50 through 53, I tried to use my skills to fend off the Gold Warrior. He was the strongest enemy I'd ever faced, and he wasn't giving up easy. No matter how fast I tried to run away from him, he caught up to me. Can't we just talk this out, Mr. Gold Warrior? He didn't seem to think so. Instead, he kept trying to jab me with his lethal spiky club. I kept building walls between us, but every time, he'd effortlessly get around them. I was in real trouble. I tried taking him down with a bow, but he used his shield to stop the arrows. I got one shot in, but that was about it. This is not effective. I need to change tactics. I pulled out my multi-tool and activated the sword. I couldn't stop him with my master builder techniques or my bow, so I was going to have to fight him directly instead. It was a tough battle, and I lost quite a few hearts along the way. I even got down to half a heart. Luckily, I was able to build my way to safety and eat to regain my health. Phew, this is getting intense. But all right, here goes round two. After a lot of fighting, I was finally able to defeat him. When he went down, he dropped his gold shield and a golden key. Oh, I wonder what this unlocks. I better keep it in my inventory. You never know when you need a key. On days 54 to 57, I left Lord Business's spooky factory and made my way outside onto the plains. But something was already out there waiting for me. A powerful earth elemental, ready to battle. The earth elemental started walking towards me, but out here in the open, I could use my master building skills. I quickly started using the master frost technique, building stairs so I could run up them and attack from above. It's over, I have the high ground. I leaped down onto the earth elemental and destroyed him in one direct strike to the head. He dropped a powerful Protection 3 enchantment book too. Wow. This will make me a lot more resistant to damage when I apply it to my armor. Yes. But I should probably wait until I get better armor and apply it then. With my mission complete, I returned to my base to tell Master Frost. I found him sitting on a bench by the lake as he made ice around him freeze up. I told him about Lord Business's evil plan and about my mastery of his technique. Excellent work, Zozo, despite the frightening news. Go see Bruce in a few days. He'll have something valuable for you to do then. Will do. Just make sure that all the fish don't freeze. On days 58 to 62, I decided that my base needed a little tender love and care, so I decided to expand the farm to also include chickens. Mmm, anyone else want a fried egg? But my base was only one half of my defenses. I needed to get myself better armor and tools too. That's why I used my multi-tool to dig into a mine behind my base, going deeper and deeper until I finally found some diamonds. Even though they look like Lego pieces, diamonds are still a master builder's best friend. I took the diamonds back into my crafting room and built myself a full set of diamond gear, weapons, tools, and armor. Then I crafted myself an anvil and applied the Protection 3 book to my diamond chestplate. Now I finally have some proper protection. Wait, 
What is this? I don't have a full armor bar. I guess Lego diamonds aren't quite as tough as real diamonds. After all that hard work, I built and added a new floor with a lounge and a small terrace to my base so I could finally put my feet up and relax. I just knew it wouldn't last for long. On day 63 to 66, I approached Bruce the Lego villager and asked him what he had for me. I've been closely observing your progress, Zuzu, and I believe you finally have what it takes to meet the next master builder. I've marked out the swamp where he lives on your map. Seek him out and learn his teachings. Thank you, Bruce. Wish me luck. Over the next couple days, I made the long journey to the swamp. It was a dark and humid place with a strong, musty smell. I really didn't want to spend too long here. Even less so when I saw a huge polypham running towards me, ready to fight. Get out of my swamp, intruder! The polypham was twice the size of me. I'd never stand a chance against him in a fight. I tried to run away, but he was way ahead of me. The polypham mined into the ground and rapidly tunneled below me before popping back up out of the ground right in front of me. Please, I don't want any trouble. I'm just looking for the master builder. The polypham immediately stopped. Oh, why didn't you say so? Nice to meet you. I'm Master Tony, the master builder of the swamp. Master Tony, I'm so pleased to see you. I was told you didn't like visitors. Normally I don't, but today I need a hand. I've got a monstrous swamp leech infestation. If you help me with that, I'll teach you a thing or two. On day 67 to 70, I followed Master Tony deeper into the swamp to help him take on his monstrous swamp leech problem. Being a master builder, I'm pretty strong, but leeches have always squicked me out, so I appreciate your help on this. It didn't take us long to find the leech infestation. I didn't want to get too close either. They looked pretty freaky, so I pulled out my bow and picked them all off at a distance, one arrow at a time. Leeches, be gone! Whoa, I should have been a pest controller. Great job, Zozo. I'm glad I don't need to look at those nasty things anymore. Happy to help. Now, how about that technique? Master Tony was a man of his word. He showed me how he'd mastered the combat tunneling technique, how you could use your pickaxe to dig into the ground to escape or create pits for enemies to fall into. Wow. This is awesome. I only need to learn from one more master and I'll be a master builder myself. On day 71 through 74, while searching the plains, I found an entrance leading to some kind of bunker. What could have been inside? And if you like crazy mysteries and wild adventures, you should search for more Zozo videos by typing Z-O-Z-O -Z -O into your search bar. I prepared my diamond sword and climbed down through the door. It looked like some kind of secret bunker underneath, filled with bookshelves and books all marked factory plans. Wait! This place must be owned by Lord Business! Clever observation, Zozo! Lord Business suddenly came out of the secret bookshelf entrance and swung at me with his netherite sword! I barely dodged in time! I made a mistake, sending my minions to destroy you before. I should just get it over with and destroy you myself! I tried to fight back, swinging my sword at him, but every time he blocked my strike and fought back, knocking off a few of my hearts! You're no master builder, Zozo. You're weak, weak, and pathetic. As Lord Business tried to finish me off, all I could do was escape. In a frantic panic, I built a wall between him and myself and made my way out of the bunker while he broke through it. I wasn't strong enough to beat him. All I could do was run, but at least I escaped. This time, anyway. On day 75 through 78, I continued making improvements on my base. It was one of the tallest and most impressive bases I've ever made, so I decided to build downwards too. That's why I made a cozy basement to hold extra supplies. I even installed a few beds just in case. Just as I was finishing up, Master Frost approached me with a gift. Zozo, I just wanted to tell you I'm so proud of all the work you're doing. Nobody is fighting back against Lord Business as hard as you. I wanted to give you a gift as a token of my thanks. It's a potion of strength I brewed for you. Wow, thanks, Master Frost. I can't wait to try it. I drank the potion and felt myself getting bigger and stronger by the second. By the time the transformation was done, I was a full-grown Lego man with 12 hearts. Let's see Lord Business try to take me on now. On day 79 through 84, I decided to travel for a bit to flex my new strength and master builder abilities by taking on some bad guys in the forest. Lucky for me, a gang of bad guys weren't hard to find, 
as when things got dark, the woods soon became filled with angry skeletons. You guys have got to go down, no bones about it. They didn't appreciate my bad pun. Instead, they attacked me. I decided to put all my master builder skills to use in stopping them. First, I used Master Frost's technique. I quickly made a stairway and climbed to the top to get away from them. Can't get me up here. Then, I used Master Tony's special technique. I leaped down onto the ground from above and started digging until I formed a big square hole in the ground. It didn't take long for the skeletons to follow me and fall in as I climbed back out. Then I capped it off with Master Ren's technique and built a roof over the pit where all the skeletons were trapped, sealing them away forever. Wow, I'm almost a master builder. It's true, and I like your style, Zozo. I turned and saw that an Egyptian jackal had been standing there and watching me the whole time. He seemed impressed. I'm Master Joey, the final master builder. I hear you've been looking for me. You heard correctly, Master Joey. Can you teach me your special technique so I can finally become a true master builder? I won't give you a technique, Zozo, but I will give you a tool. The hammer. When you need it to destroy blocks in a hurry, you just can't beat it. Congratulations, you're a master builder now. On days 85 through 89, I came back to my base with new tools and new knowledge, only to find that we were under attack from a horde of spider creepers. They were crawling all across the village and exploding, destroying chunks of the buildings. I was terrified they would go for my base and the people inside. I can't let you do this. One of the spiders came crawling towards me. Fortunately, Bruce came out of one of the buildings with his bow, helping me fight back. Don't worry, Zozo. You won't need to fight alone. I've got your back. So we fought together, taking on and taking out most of the spider creepers until the rest ran out into the savannah. I've got to go get them. I can't let them get away this time. But as I tried to chase the fleeing group, I saw a baby Lego villager being chased by a spider creeper. I needed to save him. Don't worry, baby, I'll save you. I pulled out my diamond sword, charged in, and defeated the spider creeper. Thank you, Zozo, you saved my life. On days 90 to 94, after saving the Lego villager baby, I ran into the forest to chase the fleeing gang of spider creepers. You creeps are gonna pay for what you did to the village. I chased them until I saw that they were trying to hide in a nearby cave, but it was too late. I already saw them. I ran in, ready to fight with my diamond sword, until I noticed that I'd been lured into a trap. There was an ender creeper waiting for me, and he was wearing a name tag. It read, Vice President to Lord Business. Uh-oh, I guess you're not gonna be easy to fight then, are you? The Ender Creeper, VP, didn't even reply. He just came running at me, and I began to panic. Better use my master builder skills. I couldn't make a staircase in the cave, but I could still use Master Ren's technique and make a wall. I quickly built one up between us, but VP teleported right through it and hit me, knocking off a few hearts. Looks like this is gonna be my hardest battle yet. On days 95 through 97, the battle raged on. VP truly was the toughest enemy I'd ever fought, and often when I tried to hit him, he teleported out of the way. Why won't you stay still and fight fair, VP? You're the VP of being a lousy cheater. Being an ender creeper, he also had the ability to teleport lit TNT right on top of my head. Oh man, I've gotta be careful and dodge his falling TNT. That's when I figured out the perfect method of stopping him. I used Master Tony's technique and created a hole, tricking the Ender Creeper into falling into it. After that, all it took was one strike from above to destroy the Ender Creeper. He even dropped a banana waba brick, one of the strongest unbreakable pickaxes in the world. So of course, I grabbed it. In that moment, I had a vision revealing the truth about Lord Business. Once, he also wanted to be a master builder and he sought out the secrets to learn the knowledge and the techniques. But in the end, he was never meant to be. He was too greedy and impatient to truly learn. So instead, he decided he'd make others do the work for him and just take all the money. If Lord Business never even fully gained his master builder skills, maybe I really will be able to finally defeat him. On day 98, I prepared for the final battle, mining to gather extra blocks that I could use in the fight. Before I could leave, each of my friends came to offer words of encouragement. First, Bruce, the Lego villager. You're one of the strongest fighters the resistance has ever had, Zozo. I just want you to know, no matter how this ends, it's been an honor serving with you. Then came Master Ren. You have learned the ways of the master builder, Zozo. 
remember them and use them wisely. And even Lord Business won't be able to defeat you. And finally, Master Frost. Be creative, Zozo. That's the most important thing. And it's something you're brilliant at. Lord Business will never be able to take that away from you. Hearing all of this made me finally feel ready to take on the evil mastermind behind it all. On day 99, I made my way to Lord Business's business base, where I was sure to find him. On the way there, I saw a Lego kid playing in the savannah. I believe in you, Zozo! You're my hero! Thanks, kid. I'm gonna try my best. But when I arrived outside the business base, I noticed that it was heavily guarded by a gang of soul vultures. Oh no, how can I fight all of these, then take on Lord Business? I'll be outmatched. That's when Master Tony the Polypham suddenly appeared. Don't you worry, buddy. I'll take care of the soul vultures. You get in there and take that businessman down. Thank you, Master Tony. I couldn't do this without you. Master Tony ran in and started fighting the soul vultures. And while he was distracted, I ran right past him and used the key dropped by the gold warrior to enter the business base. I knew that key would come in handy. On day 100, with my tools gathered and my master builder status secured, I entered the inner sanctum of Lord Business's business base. The place was huge, with tall walls and a massive fountain in the middle. I proceeded forward through a treasure room filled with gold piles. He was waiting for me on the other side of the room, sitting in his giant golden throne, laughing evilly. So you're finally here, Zozo, but I'm afraid you're already too late. It's never too late. Ha! That's what you think. My forces are ready to roll out, and they follow only my command. This whole world will be turned into one giant corporation, and I will be the CEO. Only a master builder could stop me now. That's the thing, Lord Business. I am a master builder. I pulled out my hammer and prepared to battle the evil businessman for the sake of the world. He jumped off his chair, wielding a netherite sword, and tried to attack me. I quickly built a wall between us, and any time he knocked the wall down, I built another. Aren't you even going to fight back, Zozo? This is pathetic. I am fighting. I'm fighting like a master builder. I blocked myself into the treasure room while Lord Business was breaking down my wall. I quickly started building a staircase. As he broke through, I leapt down onto him and hit him. No, no fair. You'd know these techniques if you ever bothered to learn them, Lord Business. And you'd know this technique if you had money. Ender Creepers, attack. Lord Business pulled a dirty trick. Doors around the room opened and heavy creepers started piling in. He was going to blow me sky high. Oh, no. Face it, Zozo, you're outnumbered and outgunned. I've won. Not yet, you haven't. It was time to put all my training to good use for one last move. While the heavy creepers chased me, I mined a huge hole into the ground with my hammer. I pushed Lord Business into the hole. I looked at the creepers and they followed me as I jumped into the hole. Zozo, what are you doing? Finishing this. As Lord Business and the heavy creepers scrambled around, trying to grab me, I placed down the ladders and climbed out of the hole. Yes. Zozo, you fool, let me out of this pit. The heavy creepers will explode. It'll destroy us both. Not quite, Lord Business. Boom, they all exploded, destroying Lord Business with them as I ran from the room. It was finally over. I'd become a master builder and save the whole world.